Are we live? We're, we're live. You're live. Are we good? Whoa. <laughs> yes, Hi. we're so good Woo! at this. Right bad? on time. Dreaming. Eight o'clock <laughs> on the dot. Nailed it. Hello, everyone. Happy Hanukkah to those who celebrate it. Uh, thanks for tuning in and sticking with us uh, through uh, some light technical difficulties. And welcome to the second ever episode of The Brian Identity. The first ever live streamed one, which you totally couldn't tell by how professionally we started all of this. And our first ever uh, charity event in support of Extra Life and the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. I'm your host and GM, Sam. You may know me as the GM of Pot Against the Machine, or you may not. That kind of I'd be surprised that you were here, though. And on the stream tonight is a fantastic cast of players who have been tasked with covering for me as I stare vaguely into the camera, having completely forgotten what even is Pathfinder. Starting with our celebrity guest, joining us all the way from Southern Town Foolery, Adam. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I hate to burst your bubble, but celebrity, mm, not so much. Sorry. Sorry, no good, no good there, yes. no good there. Right. Uh, how are you doing? Thanks for real though. Thanks for having me, Sam. Yeah, thanks for coming and joining us on our very, very professional stream. That is, yeah, this is really like top notch professionalism. I, I, I feel like I really got some work to do. You know. Well, I, I don't think any other stream has quite as many Jeffs as as we currently have displayed. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's that's that, there's a lot of Jeffs, uh, a lot of I know. I also know there's a lot of Sams involved Jeffs, in a this. Lot of Sams. Yeah, you circle uh, back around to the the original uh, feud, I guess. The ongoing war of attrition. <laughs> there's a few Izzy outliers though, aren't there? Uh, not anymore. No, no Izzy is no. currently played by Jeff. Oh, okay. <laughs> We were just talking earlier in our Discord about we need an oops all Sam sort of shenanigan. So uh, this was not the plan. It was never oops all Jeff. But now it is. Yeah, but there it is. <laughs> and I, I think um, if you could just cover up me with some Jeff, um, that would be optimal. <laughs> what see what I can do once I get everybody else in frame. I can with? stick another Jeff on top of you at the end there. Just add a Jeff. <laughs> wow, I'm very strange. Um, yeah, so um, we got Adam, and then since he's all over the screen, uh, Jeff, how about you introduce yourself? Hello, I am Jeff. You may know me as the voice of Asher Helich on Pot Against the Machine, or if you listen to the first episode of the Brian Identity, the voice of Dane Scully. Looking forward to being all of the cast tonight. Oh, wait, I don't have to anymore. Oh, good. We're fine now. And hey, there's a plane overhead, so someone else. Well, a plane overhead sounds like a good transition to the one of us who lives next to a train, Izzy. Oh, I'm Izzy. I live next to a train. Um, most of the time I am Kira, who's like a, you, you, I, most of you know who that is, it's not relevant here. Also, last time I was Alexa, who is like a robot person, who's unfortunately recently assimilated into Skynet for not at all nefarious purposes, uh, that may or may not be related to the great witch, uh, Bezos. Um... So I got a new character for you tonight that I will introduce at a time that feels appropriate when everyone else, by everyone else, I mean Adam, celebrity, Adam, uh, introduces their character. And now we'll stop talking and let probably Zach, probably going to be Zach, I'm going to assume it's Zach. Oh, yeah. I mean, that lead in, it is true. Um, Skynet and Alexa might have had a little bit of a tactical and tactical and moral disagreement about interacting with meat-based life forms but an assimilation happened um it was fine you know it, but just the, a merger is the term that i think that we would both appreciate and moving forward i think that th there's going to be some synergy and uh from that i'm going to just kick it right over to jeff again no sorry jerome <laughs> <laughs> keep going jeff. Uh, hey uh 
Duro. Uh, on the main pod, I play the angry old man Vargas. And on the previous Brian, and also on this one, I play the uh, skeezy used car salesman-esque investigator Hal Fling, who is uh, definitely just a halfling with a nice hat and nothing else. And I'm going to be honest, I've been working on getting the video done, so I can't remember if everybody else has been introduced yet or if I can still pass this to someone. Oh, we, we got saved a couple you Jeffs still. For last, but you can <laughs> bounce it back to Jeff because we still have. Yeah, I'll Jeff. bounce it back to the Jeff that is currently on top of Zach. Oh, no. Specifically <clears> that. I don't one. know whether, which one of us should talk. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to, to interject anyway. Uh, which I can do. I can go twice at least. Uh, of all the times. Oh, you're playing the Jeff card, huh? Yeah. It's, you know, I feel dirty, but sometimes I just lean into it. Of all the times we've done an intro, an, an audio only medium, and waved at the camera, we didn't <laughs> actually do that on the video <laughs> stream where he's like, and here's everybody. Uh, it would have been the perfect time to actually do what we usually do only for ourselves so yeah that would have been really smooth you want to do a group wave jeff can you count us thin jeff oh yeah no (laughs) come on it's a visual wave randomly then yeah 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 i don't know how we're gonna sync this up in post yeah it's as important as the clap is for timing I would also like to interject that I did wave, but I was currently Jeff, so. (laughs) There's no evidence. (laughs) Got it. Um, Everybody is on camera. (laughs) Yay. You're tiny on camera, though. You are tiny. Oh, wait, yeah, why am I tiny in that? Oh, because I need to transition over. There. Because you're a halfling. Look at that. that. Woo! Amazing. (laughs) All right. Well, before we start uh, playing Pathfinder, I'd just like to encourage everyone out there to take a Monet, a Monet, a moment also, not just a Monet, uh, to donate uh, what you can to Extra Life. Um, all donations go to fund the 170 member hospitals of the Children's Miracle Network that provide 32 million treatments each year to kids across the U.S. and Canada. Donations stay local and fund critical treatments and healthcare services, pediatric medical equipment, and charitable care. Uh, we're hoping to raise uh, two hundred and fifty dollars towards this great cause by the end of the stream, but you know, the sky's the limit. Uh, we should have a um, link popping up periodically in the chat via Nightbot when it's not deleting everything Sir Newt says. Um, and you mean doing its job appropriately? Yeah, which it's reminds just... me, I need to uh, edit our spam protection. Um, <laughs> excess caps friendly disable. There we go. Go nuts, everybody. Please yeah, do not actually him, go Tucker. nuts, but... <laughs> no, you heard him. Go nuts. Specifically you, Newt. Yeah, just as long as we can still censor the word, you know, G-O-G. Also, or I apologize if I was a little quiet a moment ago. I still had my filter set from when I was expecting to not have my other filter, so I was double filtered for a while through the stream. Mm. Nice. Double distilled. <laughs> So, previously, on the Brian identity, the agents of the Bureau of Research and Investigation of Aliens in Numeria, at the request of their beloved leader, Garrett Burwaddle, and with the help of a normal human adventurer named Albert Barali, investigated sightings of mysterious lights and unusual leaf activity in the Echo Wood, hoping to find evidence of spaceships and alien activity. They dodged giant pumpkins, menacing laughter, and navigated around a really, really big owl, and finally had a dance party with a skeleton. But in the end, the only alien evidence they were able to find was a stone carved to look like a potato, which really doesn't seem like evidence of anything at all. Just stone that kind of looks like a potato. That brings us to tonight's story. We open at a dock that extends out into a large lake. It's impossible to tell how large the lake is, though, as a thick coating of mist envelops it obscuring everything from sight beyond ten or so feet. A large carriage approaches, and Garrett pulls hard on the reins of his team of horses and shouts, Wow! 
drawing them to a stop just short of the edge of the land, where a lone figure is standing. Adam, if you'd like to tell us who we see standing on the docks. All right, I will do that. Uh, so you see a figure cloaked uh, with a green hood and a longbow kind of slung over their shoulder. And this is a Tengu that you see uh, with black feathers, although it has some like real dark blue kind of feathers around the beak. Um, he, the clothes that he wears are a bit tattered, uh, not necessarily like, uh, you know, bad quality, just well used, I should say. Uh, you know, and there's a mix of, um, it looks like dirt's almost been purposefully applied to his getup. Uh, but he's just standing there, uh, seemingly waiting on your approach. And um, in the carriage, of course, we have our totally normal, basically human agents of Brian. Uh, let's start with Hal. Uh, you probably saw me typing to you in that picture. Uh, it's Hal is, uh, well, he is a halfling. He is still wearing the, uh, very sharp, uh, little gray and black trilby that he had on before with the almost comically large owl feather stuck into it. But rather than the uh, ridiculously loud hound's print or hound's tooth sports coat, he appears to be wearing a halfling sized version of like a Humphrey Bogart style overcoat with all the extra straps and everything. And underneath it, he has on a charcoal gray suit that looks like it's maybe about a size and a half too big. And he still has the same uh, very ugly leather shoes. And he looks kind of not super happy to be there, but he showed up. I just noticed... Oh, oh I just noticed it. your hat has a jaunty Oktoberfest theme that really I didn't does. realize during the last game. <laughs> that is yeah, it really does. Yeah. Nice hair halfling. Yeah, I'm amazed I was able to find a picture online of a perfectly ordinary halfling wearing a trilby with a feather in it after I came up with that idea. <laughs> uh, Jeff, who else do we have here? Well, uh, standing as the carriage comes to a stop is totally a normal human who has gray skin and a black fedora over his appropriately sized and not elongated skull. Uh, he's wearing a black trench coat, uh, out of which come you know, his two and only two arms. And he has his long sword uh, on his hip and his hand sort of tapping idly along the hilt. Like he's ready and he sees you know, the mist in the lake before him and just kind of shakes his head and says more to himself than anyone else. I was the one who swam last time, and all we got out of it was a potato rock. I look forward to these aquatic escapades. How about newly born uh, hive mind Skynid? You know, that is two for two, me drinking water on my character intro on these. I'm really glad we have a running gag already. Uh, excellent. So Skyned, um, as you can see, inverted right there, um, he is wearing his normal smart green sweater layered over a salmon button-up shirt with an orange tie. His bristly mustache and slick back hair are robust chestnut brown um his skin totally human not covered in luminescent tattoos and um well hidey ho neighbor you know 
<laughs> that brings us to our other newcomer on in the uh, the only newcomer in the cart. Um, how about Aline? Yes. Hi. Hi, I'm Aline. You can call me Ali for short, Ali Gata. Um, I'm a very normal human person. Um, I sometimes do look a little bit like some sort of reptilian uh, thing, but I'm not. I'm a human person um, hailing from the uh, lands of Long Guy. Uh, I'm just on tour, you know? I'm out here with my friends. I'm taking pictures. And she, like, pulls out a fantasy iPad and, like, leans over to a window and just sort of, like... <sighs> This is, okay, takes a picture. Oh, I deleted something. Okay, well, next time I'll try. Um, yeah, she is, you know, a blonde human woman. That's what she is, who sometimes looks kind of like a giant reptile. I don't know. What are you going to say? And um, with Garrett standing at the front, on the front of the carriage on a, bench that is clearly designed for someone to sit on rather than stand on. Uh, he claps his hands together, grinning like mad as they arrive. He says, Oh, please, employees, Numerians, country people, I know you're asking yourselves, why are we here? And why did Garrett just sit in silence, refusing to answer even the simplest of questions for the entire multi-day carriage ride? The answer to that question is classified. If I had told you, I'd have to kill you. But the answer to the other question is very simple. <clears throat> Our dear friend Crispin can elaborate. And then he uh, jumps down unceremoniously off of the cart, which looks like it hurts because it's like seven feet up in the air and he's about three feet tall. Um, but um, he lands like right next to Crispin. And stares at him with his wild Garrett eyes. Yeah. Like a three uh, point superhero landing? Or yeah, was like it? a 25 point landing because he just <laughs> totally beefs on it. his face. Yeah. Uh, I suppose this is where I tell you why you're here. I found a vessel out in the lake. Uh, my name is Crispin Marsh, by the way. It is a pleasure to meet all of you totally normal humans. There is a vessel that is marked with the name the Perpetual Oath. And upon this vessel, I saw several strange things. Yes, indeed. There were small constructs all about the deck, swabbing, tying ropes, doing typical deck on a ship type things. I was there because I had heard rumors of some massive, tall, guild creature with yellow skin and webbed fingers. That being said, I did not see such an individual. What I did see are some strange cannons that seemed to move about on their own. I concluded that it was not safe for me to investigate any further on my own. So I reached out to our mutual friend here, Mr. Burwaddle, and he assured me that he could put together an investigatory team full of totally normal humans to assist me in exploring the ship. Your mission, as always, is to kidnap an alien, alive or dead, preferably alive, I guess, and bring it back to me such that I can make all of my detractors shut their dumb faces forever and steal in a sweet, sweet loot for us all to divide up equally. Equally meaning that you give it to me and I give you a sum that seems, you know, good by my judgment. Any questions? Um, Garrett, given the aquatic nature of this assignment, I'm going to require a lot of rice for a totally normal human reason. 
Because you are hungry? Yes. <laughs> I'm actually doing kind of a keto situation now, so I can't do a lot of rice. Do you have a cauliflower <laughs> rice? Um, um, no, the cauliflower rice suffice for your needs as well. Um, I suppose it'll have to. Skynet looks nervously out at the choppy water. How are we to approach this <clears throat> vessel? Do we have a rowboat or something of that nature? Raft of many logs lashed together. Incidentally enough, there happens to be a rowboat lashed to the dock that I totally mentioned before in the earlier narration. You just weren't paying attention. I have um, got Jeff. <laughs> if you look over here. There is a rowboat. Ah, uh, now I see it. The mist, you know, it's coming and going, and has been canonically stated to obfuscate things. Indeed, they do not call this the Lake of Mist and Veils for no reason. Uh, Al is going to kind of try to yank Garrett aside slightly away from everybody else, and if he can manage to do it, he's going to say, Hey, uh, Garrett, buddy, so after the whole thing of you not paying me the last three times now, I actually have, uh, I've, uh, well, I kind of went solo. I got myself my own, uh, well, this. And he pulls out a card that says uh, Black Pyramid Investigations. And he says, so you're hiring me on as a freelancer. There's all kinds of stuff in here. You're going to have to sign a contract. But we'll talk about it later. But as you can see on the card, I am legally incorporated here. I'm legally incorporated in Abaston. I'm good in Osirian and for for union reasons, Newark, New Jersey, but <laughs> we'll talk about it later, okay? And he pats Garrett on the shoulder, and as he does, he notices how droopy his suit is, and you see him kind of twist his wrists a little, and suddenly the suit seems to fit him perfectly like it was bespoke. He goes, we'll talk later, and he steps back over to everybody else. And Garrett takes the card and pulls out a little marker and scribble, scribble, scribble. Helmet and this is like, sir, that, that's that's sort of fruit. <laughs> Lift the cross out the lancer, which I don't see the lance. But we'll talk later. Well, I'll, I'll give you, you know, I don't want to do work for fruit. But I, hey, if there's no more questions, I'll leave you to it, you know? Hop on the old robot and have some fun. Remember, if you're the greatest extraterrestrial investigator slash adventurers in the history of Numeria, a little thing like aliens and robots can never stop you. Robots? That's bizarre. Don't be strange. I... I still am not entirely 100% sure that these alien things actually exist, but if they if they're here, we'll find them for you, buddy. I would just like my lake to be free of this very spooky ship. I forgot to mention that it does hover strangely above the water. I feel like I might have buried the lead there. It's been a while since I've talked to humans. Yeah, well, now you got the chance to talk to three, four, three of us, and then also a halfling. Congratulations, is what I've been told, and I have no reason to disbelieve that. All right, so we're going on a cruise then? Is this um all included, or will I be expected to tip? Oof. Uh, I, I, I do not require any tuity. Just your eyes and ears. I can give Will you, you be taking those 
after or before? What's that? Oh, nothing. It was a terrible mm -hmm. joke about Take requiring our eyes and ears, and I was wondering if you were taking them now or later. But oh, I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> really good job. I was right sorry. My oh, yeah. Are... See, that's that pot against the machine charisma that we just <laughs> ooze. That I'm glad that we can bring you all a little bit closer and feel We nice. ooze it very slowly <laughs> with great viscosity. I go uh, dirt. Mm, just viscous, like it. Viscous charisma. I hate that word so much. Mm. That's the worst word. The, we are the uh, pitch drop experiment of charisma. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Sam, based on the really interesting description we were provided by Crispin of this guild creature, would we be able to make sort of a, a check to know knowledge-wise if there's something we may be able to recall about this creature? Sure, you could do like a knowledge local. I was really hoping you would say that. Do I have any particular any knowledge. I know it's this is going to be live the first roll ever on this alpha dice from dice envy Ooh. that's diceenvy.com it was a natural three for a oh. total of a 10. dice envy i too dice envy <laughs> would like to make a new roll my brand new ceramic dice from fighting chance studios so excited here we go here we go here we go that's a natural five but the dice are so pretty <laughs> so pretty. I rolled the two on the old digital dice for a 14 on my knowledge local. Well, uh, between the three of you, um, really doesn't sound like something from around here. Okay, well, this does not sound like it's from around here at all. It's yeah. what I've got. I, You're welcome. That's, I, I agree. Okay. Uh, I Sorry, also rolled a natural three so uh i forgot that you're supposed to put points in knowledge so i don't have any knowledges <laughs> good luck guys <laughs> <laughs> oh same i feel you thank you adam <laughs> yes yes no problem if you guys want to ride i've got 500 ranks in that so we're good to go. <laughs> All right, that's it. I ride Crispin into battle. Let's go. Fly. I'm not a flying tango, fly. but oh, you can no. get on my back. Let's go, Derek. Pony by Genuine Place, and we just <laughs> head that's off. Very onto... different. Yes. This is I mean, that's how you're supposed I to level expected. up characters, right? You but pick one stat, playing. and you just keep putting everything into it every level. Yeah. I, I was Reddit expecting told. help in clearing my lake, but I am enjoying this riding. Thank you, Skynet, for making my day better. Well, as the great bard Genuine says, probably nothing that I can actually say on the stream because <laughs> right? it's all ages. I was but... real excited. <laughs> I will listen yeah. to the lyrics and take it to heart. Yes, Genuine for your mind. <laughs> um. All right, so this this little skiffy do will fit all six of us totally, five of us totally normal individuals, correct? Yeah, I, think, I don't think Garrett's perfect. coming with us. Yeah, Garrett. Um, I don't think he could get his petard on there, so um, he's gonna be Fair. a no go. Um, what about Andrew? Is it between the hours of midnight and one? Any chance we can get him to come along? Um, no, do you guys, it's, you guys listen to the show? <laughs> this is pretty far from uh, the Echo Wood. You're basically on the sort of opposite end of Numeria at this point. Um, I should disclose this misty lake at the northern end of Numeria is the Lake of Mists and Veils. Mm. Aptly named, as it is in, covered in a thick rolling layer of fog that continuously blows in from the north making it difficult to see more than a few yards in front of you. Are we uh, hopping in the boat? Yes. Yeah, I think so. That's right. Oh, yeah. Skynet steps into a large Ziploc bag and slowly <laughs> seals it before stepping into the skiff itself. Very nice. Yeah, oh, Allie will add some, 
rice in there just in case. Some preemptive cauliflower rice, but rice nonetheless. <laughs> Mushes against my carapace. <laughs> Fantastic. These I think are the whole bottom of the rowboat is just filled with riced cauliflower. <laughs> These are strange customs, but as I said, I have been in the caves for quite some time. Perhaps I am not aware of the new fashion. It's Perhaps lower I, in carbs. Yes, I will get my own plastic bag after this mission is over. Although I will use quinoa, as it is my preferred <laughs> grain. Nah, it's I safer it was for birds. Quinoa. <laughs> Speaking of birds, I believe I've maybe worked with your cousin Tux. He has a white belly um, in the Linux Imperium. Um, he's usually generally telling everyone about how he's superior to everybody else. Is that yes, ring a bell? We don't speak of him in our family. He, uh, well, yes, that is a sore subject. <laughs> uh, he is my cousin, you're right, but I, I'm much more using a window, so to speak. Oh, I'm partial to a fedora, as he looks over at Jeff. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. No. Oh, God. It was He's in the yeah, he turns Pain and looks up at the sky at Jeff, the player. <laughs> and Breaks the fourth the wall. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to remember who had the trilby and who had the fedora, which, you know, and is like a Dane common pathfinder at the table <laughs> conversation, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. If I had a dollar for every time. Really bringing me back to society play games right there. Sorry. Yeah, we need somebody else with a bowler, and then we need somebody with a top hat. And we just need to have every style of old hat that look horrible on people in modern day and just... for it i actually want one of those dr seuss hats they used to sell at like uh state oh, fair oh yeah like the really rave hat aliens yeah yes. cat in the hat hat yeah mm -hmm. yeah they still no sell idea. those uh at mardi gras although they're they're mardi gras colors but you you, you can still get the big crazy bar top hats <laughs> or whatever Green all right that's all it my first is... post-covid trip all you need to Excellent. do is track down the insane clown posse and i think you're set <laughs> <laughs> I would not recommend it. That's actually was, the BPG. But um <laughs> BPG. <laughs> so yeah, the surface of the water is clear blue and you can see down several feet into the cold, cold lake, and you can see your own very human slash halfling slash tango reflections. But above the water is a soupy wall of white. For all but the most seasoned trackers, navigating the lake at this time of year in these conditions would be next to impossible. But our friend Crispin, of course, has a plus 11 in survival, and thus probably eats fog like this for breakfast. Which is... It's not very nourishing. At least it's hydrating. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Uh, the last known uh, location of the Perpetual Oath was several miles from here so you know you've got some time if you want to talk strategy or get to know each other on the boat ride over um if you want to vamp at all feel free to vamp um what <laughs> do you all know of constructs or mechanical beings absolutely nothing hmm. yeah i know uh apparently the uh the Dude in the loincloth up in Starfall. He's got a bunch of them that work for him. Uh, other than that, never really, never really ran into the guys. I got a cousin who works in construction. Real jerk. I never talked to him at all, you know. And I keep telling him, like, "Hey, you got to come through for family dinner." He never comes. So, um, I can't say I'm partial to con construction. But I don't know. I don't know. That's um, all I got. That's a common mistake. I was not speaking of construction workers. Uh, though I think maybe they would be a favored enemy of mine as well. Uh, <laughs> if they're not coming to dinner, that's so rude. So rude. Uh, yes, I, uh, there has been a 
rise of machines uh, in this area, and it is quite disturbing to me, personally. You see, I prefer uh, things natural, and I like my caves to be quiet, and I want my chirping to be the only chirps that I hear. There are several of these machines on this boat. I hope that you are prepared for potentially advanced weaponry. I, uh, I just got one question. After the last uh, wild goose cake chase that Garrett sent us on, can these things, uh, do they have what you'd call, like, a mind? Because the, uh, last guy he sent us out to go fight, well, I spent a long time working on a very particular set of skills that didn't do jack squat to these last guys. And it sounds like we're going into the same thing again, and I feel like I'm gonna get punched in the face by a ghost again. But I feel like this time the ghost is going to be made of metal. So, can uh, can you mesmerize a guy like this? These uh, construction worker guys? I think not. They are without a mind most times. However, they might be controlled by this yellow-skinned uh, aquatic person. And perhaps if we can find them, we can figure out how to shut down the control of the machines. Skynet, which had been leaning in slowly, and by the time that you had finished initially talking before answering Half's uh, question, it's about three inches from your face with this glassy expression. Why, yes, uh... Determined autonomous action by machines against flesh would be horrific. Tell me more about what we intend to expect. Do you know anything of these machines? Gets like an inch closer. No oil. Perhaps that is because we are approaching the ship. I did not get close enough to determine any particulars about these uh, specific machines, other than they were somewhat small, and they seemed to uh, be doing chores about deck. So I can't imagine that they are in entirely sophisticated, but I also can't say that I know for sure. Mm. I suppose we'll just have to see. Settles themselves back. I mean, let me ask you this. Do, do I get any sense that anything is, is off about uh, Skynet as, he, as, as they get within inches of, of my face and um, having, you know, constructs as a favorite enemy and all that. Oh, maybe you should roll um, knowledge. Yeah, what would that be like a, just a perception or <laughs> uh, like a knowledge engineering against me? Or oh, do I roll like a bluff? Do you want, or maybe, do you want me yeah, to roll a... a bluff versus a sense motive kind of deal? Uh, like oh, I'm going to, I'm going to roll a bluff. Yeah, I don't have knowledge engineering. Again, I kind of forgot about knowledges. I have none. Uh, but I will roll that sense motive. We'll see how that goes. Not great. That's an eight. Um, 27. Yeah, I think with an eight against that 27, um, it just seems like a very normal human. He oh, takes yes. a bite out of a floppy disk and then puts it back into a belt pouch. Adjusts his mustache. Normal. Root roll-ups look very different than I remember. It's like a craft single, but floppy disk. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I'm probably not doing much on the way of rowing. Which one of us is rowing? Who's strong? I'm probably steering. Um, you know, I'll do a little bit of rowing, but I'm probably acting as the rudder um, since I know the, the lake fairly well. Um, Allie is physically capable of rowing, but just on principle isn't. Uh, just she's like... Um, What's the word? Uh, documenting their trip for totally normal human reasons. In fact, I think she's probably sending a like a Facebook fantasy Facebook message to her nephew. All right, so on some kind of lake. It's uh, it's very very misty. There's not a whole lot to see here, but the water is beautiful. I'm told. Um, got some mist over here. There's a little mist over there. Uh, you know what? Let me call you back when there's more to see. All right, thanks. Bye. How do you hang this thing up? Are you I'm talking to anybody? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like an it's like recording vo- a voice memo on it or something. <laughs> <laughs> just a voice memo. Yeah. I mean, Dane it's has a plus a one strength, so he my man, rowing, and a normal number of arms for rowing. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, he's doing both oars <laughs> and just hoping nobody notices. <laughs> So after a long row out, um, the oath finally emerges from the mist, practically on top of you, and we're going to see if we can pop you on over to one of my famous maps. Is that going to work? Is it going to work? I yeah. see it. Oh. Hey. Nice. Let me uh, zoom us in a little bit. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, a sleek greenish metal vessel floating silently just a few inches above the water with no obvious means of propulsion. Um, it's about as long as your standard uh, two-scale schooner looks like from here, but uh, that's where the similarity ends. Uh, it seems to be smooth metal, no visible rudder, no visible portholes, uh, no rigging, ha- rigging hanging over the side. But um, as you approach on, on your boat, you can see up above, maybe 30 feet above the surface, what appears to be a deck on top of the craft. Um, there are two metal structures which look like technically style um, alien technological guns. I can ping them. They might be above the shown field here, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, they seem to be like mounted on self-articulating arms, slowly scanning back and forth in half circles as if scanning the horizon for something, though the field of view is very limited here. Um, and they, they don't appear to have noticed you yet. You can hear distinctive clanging from up on the deck, like the sound of metal hitting metal. So what do you do? I mean, I, you know, Crispin would want to, like, stealthily kind of come up on the back of the ship and see if we can not get spotted at all. It might be prudent before boarding for us to consider um, any enhancements we may have. How I know that you like to give pep talks sometimes. I myself have a few enhancements I must attend to as he pulls out a coffee bean. (laughs) Sam, I'm going to cast Mage Armor and Heightened Awareness on myself real quick. All right. Yeah, I think uh, I think where I want to give this to uh, Al is going to give someone a uh, what you call it, one of his little hypnotism things he can do to his allies but I'm not sure who I want to give it to. Uh, he has a feeling that it might not work on Ned. He doesn't know why, but he just thinks it might. Uh, so he is instead going to use his mesmerist trick on... You know what? He's going to use it on Crispin, since he seems to be the one that knows the most about what's going on here. He'll say, uh, hey, uh, a uh, bird buddy guy, uh, Crispin. Crispin, right? Uh, yes. Hey, can you uh come here for just a second? And he's gonna look him in the eye and 
you feel like a weird kind of feeling come over you and he goes okay we're good then he goes all right you're good and, and what does that do uh basically it gives you a mesmerist ability so i can basically choose when we're in battle to give you bonuses against stuff okay um, cool there's a couple of different ones i can do and i think technically i have to choose it before i do it uh range. oh yeah i, yeah, do I mean choose so the trick i do have to choose a trick ahead of time uh okay <laughs> What are you doing with your eyes? That seems weird. Oh, okay. I I understand. <laughs> <laughs> and his eyes kind of like cross for a second. Um, the little blue feathers around his beak kind of shuffle a little bit. Yeah, so he is going to do... Okay, I know what he's implanting in you. Uh, I'm not going to say it, though, because I think it's funny here if it uh, uh, activates during the combat. All right. Mm, what a comforting sentence that one was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love what it. I'm doing to you. Mm. Uh, well, I will talk. say that after he uh, stares at you for a little bit and you feel kind of weird, you feel almost like you have, like, a static electric charge running through you. It's weird. Like, you feel like you've been dragging your feet on carpet. Okay. Sure fine. to be fine. That's fun and reassuring. Mm -hmm. uh, and based off of the description that Crispin gave, even though he doesn't know what that creature was, uh, Dane is going to cast Disguise Self on himself in an attempt to <laughs> make <laughs> the, uh, you know, throw some gills on there and look like a different humanoid since he's a humanoid like some sort of aquatic humanoid in hopes that not knowing anything about constructs he might be able to you know act like he fits in to some degree if their stealth mission goes awry give me a, a pure luck roll on a, a let's do a d100 just to see um how convincing your weird gill person costume oh yeah <laughs> This is going to be great. I'm, uh, I'm switching from the alpha dice to the omega dice for this one because I got that three before. Uh, is high or low good, or are you not going to tell me? I'm not going to tell you. Classic. It's going to be like you want to get between a 30 and a 62. There is one number that you definitely don't want to get. <laughs> oh, no. I hope it wasn't 45 because that's oh, what God. I would. <laughs> Oh, God, it couldn't be worse. I'm circling it. I'm drawing a frowny face. Oh, yeah. He looks like David Bowie with gills. <laughs> so amazing. Oh, yeah, man. Let's board the ship. It's going to be a funky time. <laughs> Does this look like the person? I hope so. I've never worn pants this tight before. <laughs> So how will you be approaching this ship? Uh, does there seem to be like any um, obvious like rope ladder or, or or notches to where we can climb up on the ship? And it looks like there are like railings up above. You don't see any ropes hanging down. Um, so it would probably be a, a tough climb if you say didn't bring any rope, the most basic of all adventuring tools. But if you well, brought any sort of means of assisting yourselves in climbing, I mean, I do have a uh, a rope and a and a grappling hook, but that seems a little little obvious. Yeah, I have uh, silk rope. I don't have any kind of thing to uh, attach it to anything with, though. I don't have a grapple. I got it. I got it. I, I, I have a hook. If you would like to use this, your silk rope will be much easier on the feathers than my really raw hemp rope. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 
you know, I'm honestly not so great with the whole uh, manual labor stuff. So, and he hands you over the rope. Yeah, all right. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll attach the grappling hook to the rope, and then, I don't know, do I have to, like, roll a check to throw the rope up there, or I just do um, my amazing throwing skills? Usually a ranged touch, I think, if I remember from Skull and Shackles. Yeah, and yeah. It, I mean, you're just basically I'm going for DC Yeah, and I think it would just be a DC 5, because he's just trying to hit a piece of the boat, mm -hmm. right? All right, well, that's a yeah. 16 on the die, then, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, and uh, are you... What side of the boat are you coming up along? You like, right come up the back, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. we're coming up the stern castle. <laughs> you the like those castle? nautical terminologies? Yeah. That was that real. The boat moves and no... we didn't. <laughs> I ran yeah. Skull and Shackles. It's the only AP I've ever played all the way through. <laughs> I had to learn. My partner had to tolerate so much pirate terminology in the house for that period of time. <laughs> it's it rough. Um, one last quick buff, Sam. I'm going to grab my logical metamagic rod, uh, which removes the emotion component of this spell. No reason why I would need that or anything. And a small pinch of copper to cast protection of techno or, uh, protection from technology on myself, which is granted from my psychic domain. No reason why I would need that either. <clears throat> sure. I've drawn a, a rope hanging down there for you. Ooh, yeah. you can almost grab it. It's right there. It's so realistic. <laughs> Can they see this? Yeah. You're oh, beautiful. Yeah. They can see the rope. Excellent. Here, I can zoom us in a little more. There we go. You're welcome. See Sam's uh, lovely the rope there. Yeah. <laughs> it's up there with like the pretty much the best of my artwork right there. Um, so I'm... are you making, um, you're just climbing right up? You making any efforts to be quiet or... Uh, I would like to be stealthy if possible. All right, so what's the order y'all are going in? And um, then I'll need stealth checks as you climb. I should probably go last. My um, hello neighborino protocol is rather loud. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll go up and scout it out. I mean, I got a pretty good stealth. I'm not sure what y'all are working with, but I got a decent stealth. Got a minus three, oh, so, ooh. uh... I have a plus twelve. Nice. All right, cool. Well, I gotta check it out. Let's see here. How's a... Uh, a 19 on the die. That's a, that's a 32. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> get a, get a, your nights. Appears into the pod. <laughs> they get a climb check from you too. Oh, yeah, I, I I did put points in that too. Oh. All right, let's see. Not very many. Twenty one. All right, you are able to scale that rope with ease, and now Adam can see stuff, and the viewing public at home cannot. <laughs> I can see it all. <laughs> There's uh okay yeah there's there's some stuff to see on this ship uh, for sure. All right, so like I'll I'll take a quick let me kind of do a quick perception while up here just to see if there's anything. Yeah, go for it. All right, let's 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 do this real quick. Oh, well, that's a natural one on the perception, so that's a fourteen total. Nice. Well, um, you can perceive that the deck below you is made of long, narrow planks of sheet metal, um, which it seems like if you stepped on them with any sort of hard boot or anything, they'd clang loudly. Um, but there's fog hanging over the surface of the ship, and it makes it difficult for you to see more than five feet in front of you, almost like there would be some, you know, concealment. concealment were you right. to be in any sort of combat right. situation. All right, I'm going to, like, peer back over the back of the ship. They're all gone. Like, they rode back. <laughs> oh, this happens to me all the time. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> uh, and I will just kind of whisper to them what I see. I'll tell you, what I do see is two satellite dishes on the deck. Um... And there looks to be five Zelda pots, Legend of Zelda pots on there as well. 
And I will mention that the deck is metal, so there's not a whole lot of chance for us once we get up here being stealthy. So once we get up, we're kind of in it. Um, and there do look, there does look to be like four um, constructs, little things up here. But that's about all I can see with my natural one. So we'll never get ready. Let's. <laughs> Would you care to knot the rope, perhaps for the less physically inclined members of your retinue? Yes, one moment. And he pulls up the rope. <laughs> He's going to tie some knots, although he struggles with that. It's a little difficult for him. Uh, he did not take that. Uh, he did not get that merit badge. <laughs> um but yeah, he gets a couple of, uh, knots in there and throws it back down. I like to think you're now canonically wearing a Boy Scout sash inexplicably with everything else you've got going yeah, on. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like there's lots of gaps on the sash where knowledge is, should be. But eating <laughs> worms and building nests, you've yeah. got like four of those yes, each. Yes. <laughs> That's your crap. Preening. Mm. <laughs> Malting. I got a big one. <laughs> Got it like three times. Ooh, those knots on there. Wow, that was some wow. lightning so fast. Apparently every drawing those made my mouse reappear because I had my mouse hidden and now it's not hidden. Ooh. <laughs> so that's awesome. Uh, Dan will climb up. You want to climb, check? I need a climb and a stealth. See if it's a climb. Right. climb. Okay, climb is a 13 total. I think knotted rope is like a DC 10. Five. Or is it a 15? Five. It's five. five with Even better. Even better. Okay. Uh, so he does manage to make it uh, aided by... Uh, he seems to climb with... I don't know. It's Maybe it's so fast it looks like he has four arms, but there's definitely just two. Uh, and then the stealth check, switching to the North Foundry Sandstorm... Okay, could be could be worse. It's an eighteen total. All right, keeping that in mind, and I'll pop you up on deck. Whoa! I mean, cool, cool. <laughs> now, who's coming up next? Um, how was it? I think your your stealth. You know, assuming we were to ascribe some sort of numerary, what's in which is a word. A uh, number to that sort of thing. I think yours is better than mine, so maybe you go up first. I'll follow right after you, and we'll have no further discussion of the numerary numbers because it's a word. <laughs> Numerically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, not the most physically inclined either, so I'm gonna wait down here with Allie, and uh, we'll go up last. Uh, yeah, you're looking at a big negative two from Skynet. Um, oh, but okay. Wow, we can... you're worse than I am. I'm at zero. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no. Consistently <laughs> worse than Jero is usually what I aim for on this podcast. So, um, uh, but yeah, stealth. You can take 10 to climb, but the stealth, though, I'm going to stealth for it. Yeah, I guess Al will, will go first and with his uh, creepy long uh, halfling fingers. Can I ready an action before they climb up? Cut the rope if we're too loud. <laughs> Just <laughs> all right. What are you thinking? Uh, uh, to cast a spell if the if we get the attention of these things put on us. Okay. So you're sort of looking out for signs that you've been spotted. Yeah, pretty much. At right, the first sign of spotting, playing up the side. Yeah, <laughs> and you're gonna. Cast he's like, fireball. he's looking very nervously, and like, you know, his his beak is kind of chattering a little bit as he sees the two that are down there still trying to climb up quietly, and he's not so so certain that this is gonna go well. So, yeah, uh, I imagine your climb's pretty okay, right? Is he? Uh, no, that's a minus two. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. minus two total, minus three for climb. 
Uh, so that's a minus one stealth, minus two climb. Uh, as mm. as she prepares to go up this rope, um, Allie has her fantasy iPad out again yeah. and is still just trying to figure out how to talk to her nephew. Um, there's yeah. nothing on the screen. She's just yelling at it like, like you know, a grandparent on Skype, if you will. Yeah. It's like Fruit Ninja is still on. She doesn't know how to close that up. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's actually music playing in the background. It's... Well, no, it's loudly playing a tick-tock, tick-tock, tick I just watched Hook. But that's all I can think about, thinking about here. Uh, so Hal got an 8 on his climb, and a, I have a plus 12, a 25 on his stealth. Right, so we'll pop Hal up there if I get on the right layer. Oh, no, well, look at that. Yeah, so now you can see all sorts of stuff. Yeah, and now the and chat the can all see it. Yeah. Look at that. We got some uh, minigun looking things. We got some uh, old 1980 satellite dishes. We got the Zelda pods. <laughs> see? That's what they are, totally. I used to have a neighbor that had a satellite dish that looked almost exactly like that. I Just actually went the pots, to your neighbor's take house the to get the, spr the sprites. No. Anyways. His dedication. Um... <laughs> so I suppose I'm marginally more skilled here. Um, similar to climb, Skynet will look back um, and say, I suppose it's just us. Tally ho, diddly. And, oh, forgot the 3D dice requires me to click and drag. I'm having a lot of fun. That's a one. Uh, so with my negative two, that's a negative one. Hey. Nice. Oh. Sorry, so Paul. Just started slapping <laughs> the <laughs> rope. <laughs> oh, so you forgot Allie to get out of the Ziploc like... bag. <laughs> so the bag, he's got no arms. It's like a Let's tether ball situation. Bag, <laughs> with, with no Sky ball. Just... I didn't think you could fail at DC five by five or more, but <sighs> you did it. I did. I did. Gracious. So, uh, do you do you need anything else from me, or do I just take another whack at a cap? Um, you can, you know, take ten to actually climb up out now that you've climbed out of the plastic bag. But I do need the stealth roll. Oh yeah, that's true. That's probably why the climb went that way. He removes himself from the plastic bag, nervously looking at the churning water below him, and here comes the stealth. <laughs> All right, 11 on the die for a 13. All right. Let's go Skynet. Zoom, up goes the Skynet. Oh, hey, look. And that leaves us with only the iPad operating human alligator. We'll take she a 10 to climb because that I failed that twice now. And then stealth. Oh, that's better. That's, uh, let's see, 16 minus 3, 13. Okay. I will never climb again. No more climbing. <laughs> so you're all up on the deck now, um, and up ahead you can hear those devices going like doo, doo, as they pan back and forth, and you can also hear the clanging of, of footsteps, but I don't feel like anybody's directly heading your way. Um, there is, um, as Adam said, this towering um, satellite dish device, which, you know, we don't have words for satellite dishes, but it's a lot bigger than it looks on the Roll20 map. It's, like, so tall, it would almost be, like, a, as tall as you'd expect a sail to be on a sailboat. Um... But it's hard to see any Can details we... on them since they're so tall and it's nasty. Um, sorry to interrupt. Can we roll a knowledge engineering? Yeah, go for it. Alrighty. Huh? Eight on the die for a twenty-four. Uh with a twenty-four, now uh, these look sorta of like they're uh, some kind of long-range communication device, but at the same time, something just doesn't look right about them. Uh, why don't you make me a will save? 
Fantastic. Oof. All right. Oh, is this against the technological situation? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. It's not well, I like a high tech trap. If yeah, well, I mean, it's like a there's a resistance bonus from protection from technology. If this is versa like robot or technological situation. So um, let's throw that on there for fun. Makes it a big 13, Chief. You got that <laughs> resistance dish network going. <laughs> uh, so, you know, something just doesn't seem right, but you feel fine. Yeah. Do we all need Good. to make real saves? Is that... No, just, just oh, okay. for right. that one. Sweet. Strange. Don't look at it. It makes your brain hurt. <laughs> So you are standing um, on the sort of upper uh, rear deck of the ship, you know, the shipward thing for it. Um, and you have your Zelda pots and you've got that um, super tall satellite dish. And there is a hatch um, basically right where you got on the ship uh, that looks like it heads down into a cabin of sorts. And then, you know, up ahead, there's the rest of the ship. And I'm assuming that these are the cannons that I saw a while back. That yeah. are on here. These are yeah. These, these um, like they're hard to see from how far away you are, but uh, they look like the sort of articulated guns on tripods. Well, also, uh, if it does anything for you, Sam, we're actually technically on the poop deck right now, which is the furthest nice. back on the aft deck. So we did it. I, it's true. It's it's what it is. Did I didn't. It. I don't make it up. Oh my I didn't God! Do I don't make the nautical rules, Sam. It's Poseidon, not me. Come on. You got the you ship know. merit badge, didn't you? <laughs> ship lingo merit badge. I ship it. You know. Never thought of being a boat. Uh, I'd say we avoid oh. these cannons and just go in the hatch. Yeah. The hatch. Uh, season two of lost baby. Let's go. I was gonna say, Dane. <laughs> Dane looks at the. The hatch and sees four, eight, fifteen, sixteen, twenty-three, forty-two, and says, "No, oh, no, don't touch that hatch. <laughs> the numbers, numbers are bad. bad. Yeah, the numbers we have are to bad." Go back. And feels the urge to put those on a winning lottery ticket, uh, but instead he's going to just look at the hatch, kind of peer down at it, give it a good old perception, make sure it's not, you know, trapped or something like that. Sure. Uh, and. Just rolling the opposite of rocks, mud, dust, paper. Uh, five on the dice for a fourteen total. I'll give that a I'll give that a little percept, kind of help you out there, Jeff. Maybe Thank you, my friend. There we go. That's probably not bad with a twenty-five total in my perception. Um. Well, with the see the terrible perception from Dane, uh, you can see some metal stairs. Um. With that slightly better perception from Crispin, just a tiny bit better. Um, something just seems weird about these metal stairs, and um, they just... You might want to make a will save. Oh. All of us? I do, I do not have protection dish network, so this is going to be a straight, oh, no. <laughs> straight will Do both save. of us need to make will saves? No, no, just Crispin. Nice. All right, that's pretty good. That's 22 on that wheel save. With a 22? Mm-hmm. 18 um, on the die there. It's it's the weirdest thing. that Those stairs aren't metal. Those stairs are wood. Mm. And oh, as you look around magic. you, it just looks like a boat. There is mechanical illusions and trickery afoot. This is wood. <laughs> That's for Sir Newt. The squawk. <laughs> not the wood. The wood's for so me. So everybody lays an egg that it. rolls off the deck. <laughs> everybody else still sees a metal ship, to be clear. But Crispin, he sees a wooden ship. I, I do. I do ship. tell them what I see. You know, for what, for whatever that's worth. All right. Um, I think being informed of the illusion, I can get will saves from everybody. Right. Let's try that again. 
be. That's a 20. Yeah, with a 20, um, Aline sees it too. It's a ship. Uh, oh my god, it's a ship. Uh, uh, 21 from Hal. Yeah, Hal sees it too. Normal ship. Wait, totally. this is this is mind affecting too, right? Um, is it? I, it's not mind affecting. Oh, because it's all right. Yeah, no, it's not. So I'm still at a 14 then. Uh, yeah, you don't know what they're talking about. It's clearly metal space kind of ship. Hmm. The the map is one of see this is metal. Die. <laughs> <laughs> Not 20 for a 25. All right, you two are free of the illusion. You see the ship I for what it is. Free. I'm glad I wasted my nat 20 on that perception check. I know, on those that's stairs. so good. So good. <laughs> Ooh, hey, we got a follower. Follow. Wait, do we have to do something during that? Do we all have to like count in and clap or like wave? <laughs> Every time we get a follower, yeah, I think follow, we should we probably all clap. count in. We should, we should all clap. Yeah. We should all just, just for you, every time we, we get a follower. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Three, two, one. Mm -hmm. all right, there so we go. That's that's clap. a pot against it's the really machine. Good. Clap, right? <laughs> the claps are not aligned too. That really meant it's really great. Well, I asked yeah, Jeff really how he feels about that. Uh, yeah. We should definitely go into it in great detail. All right. Um, so, what are you doing with your newfound knowledge that the um, the ship is a lie? I mean, it is a ship. It's just not it a metal a ship. ship. It's, it's not a cake. A it's, it's, it's not a cake. Just wondering. <laughs> they told me there'd be cake. Do you want? Oh, sorry. Please. I was just wondering. Now that we're freed, uh, well, many of us are free. Does it appear that we are hovering, or are we actually now looking like we're on the wa regularly? submerged partially as a boat is wont to do with floating etc words i would say um well i would say you can't really see the surface of the water from this high up um because of the fog but um you can feel the ship like it feels like a ship that's floating in the water it's just and, anchored station. and do the cannons look like just giant slingshots now no they still look the same okay can we cannons do another are... knowledge on those or yeah, you can do knowledge engineering. They are pretty hard to see from here, so um, you might want to get closer. I won't them. fall for your DM yeah, don't tricks. Do that. Yeah, don't that, do that. That's, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's like one of the oldest DM roll. tricks yeah. in the book if right there. Want. I'll be yeah. rolling my knowledge well, from right here. Why don't you just get a little closer? You. Totally nothing will happen. All right, Skynet will give you five feet, you dictator. And then... All right, roll finish it. <laughs> Um, and with that, a 10 on the die gives him a 26. Um, yeah, so it's hard to tell um, with them being so, so far away and they're just being so much missed. Um, I mean, they look like they're some kind of, you know, single gun of some sort. It's technological in nature. Looks weird. Doesn't really look like a normal machine. Looks like, you know, somebody who is vaguely familiar with machines might build it more than, you know, somebody who's an alien or machine expert from thousands of years ago or something. Uh, do I have a feeling, like, wouldn't you mention that they're on articulated arms, that they have, like, 360-degree movement? Uh, or they, they... they only seem to be rotating, you know, about 180 degrees. They never point over the ship deck uh, Skynet will turn around while I am not certain it appears the range of movement for these turrets is 180 degrees give or take five foot step back ain't nothing happening to me yeah so uh, does that mean if we go right down the middle none of them should be able to hit us Give it it's a, a theory I'm willing to let you test. <laughs> <laughs> have I? Oh gosh, the little boxy things in the center. Have we? Just got. Hang on, let me ping them. Or anyone else, you know, could who's already in these things. What is this? Those sails? Uh, is that a? 
shippy ship parts. The ship stuff. Can we Just walk over know. or through them? Ship words. Yeah, ship words. you could you could totally walk on them. They're like grills, like but ship grills. What do you hope to gain from moving forward on this the top of this ship? Not that I would stop you, but I am merely curious. Well, we're supposed to figure out what this thing is, right? It yes. But... looks like now it's just a regular boat, but somebody's making it look like whatever the heck that was it was looking like before. I figure if we want to find out, we either have down these... Uh, convenient stairs right here, or we can go to the front of the boat and see if there's something up there. Perhaps there's a control panel at the front of the boat. I, I will stay here while you go investigate this possibility. <laughs> Best of luck. You look great, hon. Actually, do I have a thing for that? Are we waiting for something specific here? Uh, We're just trying to figure out who uh, is. Hal oh, is um, going to cast a Vanish on himself. Uh, Sam, is this a um, flavor wheel back here, by the way? That's your, your normal ship driving wheel, you know, that ships have. <laughs> like, a, like a ship steering wheel? Yeah, like for steering ships. What are those called? Like a tiller? Yes. Tiller is usually the thing that, like, is the Absolutely. rudder controller jobby. But points for Jeff, everybody. He's not getting keel hauled after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so fun thing. Since you've all been uh, hanging out on this deck, uh, just chattering. Those uh, clang, clang, clang kind of footsteps. Mm-hmm. They get a whole lot closer suddenly as uh, it appears you've been heard. And um, a little voice shouts out, Hey! Who's there? I did say that uh, <laughs> Hal cast Vanish on himself, right? Yep, he Hal did. is vanished. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I will come and turn that last at this level. So, um, you can see through the fog a little bit that two small figures... Uh, down on the lower part of the deck, uh, rushing towards you. Is there anything that you want to do before we roll for initiative? Yeah. Hey, Ali, just here on a tour. I've gotten a little bit lost with my tour mates here. Uh, we're looking for dry land. Do you have any of that here? Just um, around. I can. That's a that feels like a, that's a solid bluff. It's a very good bluff, everyone. Crispin just kind of looks at Allie like, oh, wait, let's see where this goes. That's fine. It's fine. <laughs> We're just lost. That is a uh, total 19 bluff. A 19 for bluff. I'm going to roll a couple of sense motives here. Does she get any, like, uh, bonuses for holding printed out pages of map quest directions <laughs> and being like no i'm quite sure it's right here it says it right I on was there told to turn off the highway um sadly <laughs> she's just too far away they can't see the the map quest directions they assume that those are a gun <laughs> um, oh no but these two uh they say, say they're right. never mind this this ship is a, a private property you can't be here and um, since Hal has sneakily gotten closer to these two, I'll, I'll pop them up on screen. Uh, the first one is a little... <laughs> That's amazing. Red-eyed robot. Jaunty little best. Aww. And then, uh, you know, a robot with a nice mustache and a sword. A robot Amazing. with a mustache? That's way out there, Sam. I know. Yeah, I that mean... doesn't look like a robot. That looks like he's Ugh. probably somehow related to uh, Ned. Maybe they're like cousins. It might be. Well, I, I don't see the resemblance at all, aside from the robust mustache. 
Yeah. But they are, um, you know, around Hal's height more so than anyone else on the ships. So they uh, appear to be small. And um, they are thoroughly confused by the request for dry land. And they say, you, you got to get out of here. Any, do you have any land on this ship? We, we don't have any land here. We have boat water, but you got to go. Okay. Well, very unclear instructions. You're getting a zero on my Yelp review. Fantasy Yelp review. Yelp. You. They're mostly just confused. I oh, think. man. That was that was rough. Uh, Dang. Dane, Dane will just laugh. A totally normal sounding laugh. <laughs> uh, and say, uh, well done, man. You have handled the situation so well. Uh, Port Authority here just doing a routine inspection. Uh, and as he says this, he really kind of straightens himself up uh, as though he's almost strutting his stuff. Like he's just really acting super official. Uh, it is using a a masterpiece that he has and is going to roll uh, a bluff check. Uh, and for what it's worth, the, uh, we'll say the guy on, the fella on the left, uh, he can kind of see this, this arabesque tattoo on, uh, on Dane, who does now look like a Gilman has, uh, or, or a 45, on of 100 something to do with a gill person uh does uh that he will take a minus two on the sense motive uh the other the one on the right will not i'm gonna roll this here bluff not great seven seven total on the bluff that, that feels like a seven and then a quick pause yeah, I think internet. Jeff froze. A anticipation. A 27. Oh, 27. <laughs> That's very a different from a 7. Yes. Well, uh, the two little robot people are going to look at each other, thoroughly stymied by the idea that a Port Authority inspector appears to have suddenly appeared on their uh, ship. And then uh, one of them says to the other one, is, isn't Port Authority like the cops? And the other one says, Yeah! Yeah, Port The cops got him! No, hold no. on. Before that happens, uh, Skynet is going to quickly say, If we were the cops, we'd legally have to tell you. And then roll a bluff, because that's not real. <laughs> just so everyone knows. Yeah. Um, and then nor are we cops <laughs> But yeah, he uh that's that's what he says before rolling a twenty seven on his bluff to match the other twenty seven on the bluff. And my bluffs uh would take half the normal penalty for unlikely and even far fetched lies. I like that nice. this I entire party is it's just built to lie to people. Yeah, you have a similar <laughs> thing to me. I have a thing where I can take 10 on any bluff check that involves telling people I'm a halfling. Nice. <laughs> the truth. Weird. But that's not a bluff. Yeah. I don't understand. Me neither. Oh, yeah. I guess uh, any, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Chris, Crispin is just looking around completely befuddled by <laughs> by what's happening here. Diplomacy, um, I guess it'd be. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because one, one party member has disappeared and I don't know where he is. Uh, and the other two are talking about being Port Authority, but also not being cops. Um, and he's just kind of slowly reaching back to pull an arrow out of his quiver. <laughs> he's definitely going to unsling his, his longbow for sure uh, while this is going on. Speaking of the one that vanished, on Hal's uh, third of his five rounds of vanish up here, does he see anything up at that uh, four of the ship? It just looks like crates, um, normal ship stuff. You can now see that there are ropes and things and normal, you know, ship equipment like people who know about ships have. Um, 
everywhere, uh, but it just looks like normal crates and stuff. Okay. This boat oh, is full of ship spell. words. <laughs> Heads and bollards and <laughs> this cat is heads. Those are net. all things. Are you didn't <laughs> <laughs> the extent of my ship knowledge was knowing that two sails equals schooner, and that's from watching Mall Rats 20 years ago. It's not a schooner, <laughs> it's a sailboat. <laughs> Just call it a sloop. No one has any idea what that is. When you say skiff, I really like skiff. Uh, we rolled that's what up we came in on. Yeah, that's what we came in yeah, on. Yeah, that's Shoot. what's up. <laughs> ship knowledge, uh, merit badges, both of yeah. us. Honor I'm still ship. working. I'm still working on mine, but it. I get it next week if I if I pass the exam. However, those Ahoy. things work. I don't know. This actually <laughs> is the ship exam. Oh, uh, okay. That makes a lot nice. more sense. Pop so, um, the silver tongue uh, assault of of Dana Scully and Skyned are their minds addled with our charismatic they are so confused right now they have <laughs> basically no idea what's going on um, unlike our streamer watchers right now, I mean. <laughs> totally on board so the one that um is holding like the weird ball thing goes like um so are you just gonna leave then I, I don't I don't know what's going on can you just leave uh, we need to speak to your captain. Can you tell us where to find them? Well, um, the captain is uh, going to be below decks in his, his uh, quarters. Uh, Can I you, roll uh, on? Oh, sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, you've been a great help. <laughs> That's in... in... Just kind of looking around, to see if it's gonna pop off or not. Just go down. Uh, just go down to the captain. I'm gonna throw a 28 knowledge engineering at trying to figure out anything about these two piratical constructs. They piratical. don't. They don't seem like they would be functioning robots. They don't look like they've you know got their servos lined up and their whole business actuated. And they, you know, they move like living beings. They definitely don't have any plastic bag outfits. No, there's no... <laughs> Push them in the water. So you don't see any cauliflower or anything. <laughs> uh, so, nothing? Nothing from the knowledge engineering role? I can't determine. Um, it, that they don't seem to be engineered, really. But Okay, interesting. You can't tell without interacting with them. Hmm. Just throw a handful of rice at them. No, I'm kidding. Um, How do they respond to pocket rice? <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Yeah, the Dale Gribble pocket rice. Uh, solid move. Skynet will turn back. What is protocol for Coast Guard? Wait, what did we say we were... <laughs> Port Authority. <laughs> Port Authority. <laughs> there we are. Um, what is the protocol for the Port Authority? Do we bring the captain above board? You know, yes, and, and, and Dane, with his totally real gills fluttering, will we'll call out, send the captain up here. We don't want any trouble, just a routine investigation. Just one of you go through the hatchway. Perhaps the other one can join us on the poop deck. It's going to get really crowded on the poop deck, though. There's already so many of you. Weren't there five of you? you like a minute see ago? Through the, the fog. You have no idea how many of us there are. <laughs> oh, so this would be probably about the point where we'd be at about at the fifth and final round of uh, Hal's vanish. <laughs> Sneak up behind him and startle him. Yeah, just uh, turrets I actually have turn a question. You. <laughs> if I move, let me see, if I go there, that'll be the extent of my movement. 
Do I have line of vaguely line of sight to this guy? Um, yeah, I mean, he's got pretty good concealment from there, but yeah. Mm. Oh, because of the fog. Uh, well, he doesn't need concealment. The thing is, I have a uh, ability called Mental Stare, a feat that I can use my hypnotic stare without having to make direct eye contact. And just for the heck of it, because these guys seem so human, I want to see if possibly uh, my stare will work on them. So he okay. is going to attempt to hypnotic stare that guy. Uh, so that would be... Seeing a creature... Yeah, I don't think there's anything they need they can roll to uh, negate a stare. It just oh, happens. Yeah, usually not. It's just the straight debuff. Although yeah, it just sometimes... happens. If I want to add stuff to it, so like I have uh, other things that I can do once I'm staring. Um, do they know that they're being hit by this? Uh, that's what I'm looking at now. Uh, and the other Focus question... Focus stare on I... one creature within... Oh, let me make sure he's within 30 feet of me first. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Uh, it is mind-affecting, which is... It is mind-affecting, which is why I want to see if it works on them. To say. Yeah. Does he feel like he's getting him? Um, it... It feels like there's a mind there to connect to, and I'm going to need you to make a will save. Yeah, it says that he can remove the memory of his stare from the target's mind so it doesn't remember it was affected. So he knows it's happening while it's happening, but as soon as I break the connection, I can basically make him forget it. Like the men in black flash. Yeah, it's a thing. will save, you said? Yeah, will save. Uh, that is a 14 on the die. That is a 25. With a 25. It's weird, but all of a sudden, it's like the illusion is blown away, and I've got oh, the well, he's not icon a... the wrong side. <laughs> you're he not grows looking to at the a size robot. of a gigantic creature. Yeah. Um, you're not looking at a robot. It's a kobold in a pirate hat with a mustache and a sword. Uh, also, fun fact, I also have an ability known as Enigmatic Stare, which as long as I'm maintaining a hypnotic, hypnotic stare on something, it takes a minus four penalty check to notice me. <laughs> Ow. Yeah. That's not very nice. Well, he knows something's going on. Yeah. He's pretty confident in that. And he's like, this, this feels weird. Something, something weird's going on with you guys. I don't... Why don't no. you get the boss and we'll figure this out. Very cold, bold of you to say. I'm kidding. I don't see anything. Uh, yeah, you don't oh, know. And uh, okay. the minus two that he gets because of my susceptibility ability, uh, that penalty also applies to his sense motive checks to oppose bluff checks. Oh, my God. <laughs> So, uh, this is a crime, what you people He takes done. a minus two if anybody keeps bluffing at him as long as I'm maintaining this contact. Yeah, well, if not stopped, I think this um, robot pirate is going to head down the stairs to uh, get some help. And I think there's a good place for intermission. All right. I think we're going to take a, a quick five and... Um, now that Adam's back from taking a quick five, yeah, uh, we're gonna take a time quick that, five. Time that perfectly. <laughs> Nailed it. Please entertain uh, while we're gone. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I I'll hold it down. Good yeah. luck, Adam. <laughs> I got type I actually 15. have a thing for this. Let me see. Uh, mute. All Let's do deafen. And. Nice. Love that my. Uh headphone cord got like wrapped around the wheel of my chair <laughs> oh nice <laughs> my caster i mean it is a nice long studio mic headphone length but it also is not it's also not conducive to like when everything is within three feet of each other yeah, that's a solid visual gag level of like cord you got going on there <laughs> <laughs> 
pop that okay. back up. I'm gonna turn off this second light. I'll be right back. Oh, okay, let me uh, pop back that. <laughs> now you pop us back up from, in time to see Izzy walking away. <laughs> she just quit the stream, everybody. Yeah, crazy. Oh, she's back. Never mind. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Can you hear what the words that I have in my mouth? Yes. Yes. Cool. Try turning your to turn iPad off, off and back on again. <laughs> uh, I really only use it for watching cartoons IRL. I had to get more dice. Uh, I'd oh, only, I wasn't prepared. Yes. I only had three, and, and one of them rolled well once, but otherwise it's been all single digits. So. Well, was one of them like a D4, or one was a D8? <laughs> no, I have 14 more D20s here. Uh, <laughs> at least one of them should roll double digits. Now you'd think that, but you'd be surprised. No, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> how, 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 let's say, frequent and or normal is the urge to just put all of the dice in your mouth at once? Well, it was 0% until you asked that question, and now it's 100%. There we um, go. Not now for I'm me. resisting completely to just literally be a dice reality. goblin and just... <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. Times. How do you guys not... I mean, how do you reward your dice without keeping it inside your cheek pouches to warm Wait, it? Wait, is, is that not how you, I mean. Is that why your dogs are scared of dice? Because you put them mm -hmm. in your mouth and you spit yep. them into a spittoon? What are you, it makes a loud is that not normal? <laughs> That's why the dice tower is so loud. Every time, just like a Beverly Hills hillbilly style, just straight into the cistern right there. Yep. be a big live? market for dice yeah, spittoons. Yeah, we're, 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 uh, we're, li yeah, we're, we're lit. Live. I oh, did yeah. almost just jam of... a d20 in my mouth, but I wasn't sure if we actually we had live. people watching. <laughs> yep, no, we, we are back live. Okay. We good. have no, 11 people great. watching you uh, almost eat a d20. Well, then I think that that's like a valid question totally to normal. take to the audience. Listeners, it's like a <laughs> nope. ridiculous question. I, I never said I was a populist or that I would be controlled by polls. <laughs> Uh, I will say, in if we hit that um, goal before the end of the stream, I will ask. Sam will, yeah, he will mouth. swallow two D20. <laughs> no, not swallow. <laughs> no, he said swallow. Put it in my mouth. Get back I out. I heard swallow. You, you said swallow. Also heard. I'm swallow. putting I will words in your mouth, <laughs> not D20s. You're gonna do words that yourself. In D20s. Swallow. I will. I will. I'll, I will spit a dice into a dice tower, if we hit that goal. You heard it here, folks. Look at those. You heard it goals. here, folks. Stretch. Everyone oh man, yeah. Should also I didn't say eat. Into maybe. that to pop a stretch on there if we do hit that. <laughs> stretch goal. Just <laughs> the, eat dice. The dice spitting stretch goal, which is really. I wish you could set goals on a team channel. I. That's one of the things I'm not super fond of. I love that Extra Life gives you the ability to set goals for like certain amounts. But you can only do it on your personal account. When you create a team, you can't set uh, team goals. You can set amounts, but you can't set like things to happen on those amounts for a team. Hmm. Are we launching back in? Yeah, I, I guess we might as well. Yeah, right, we're ready. So. All right, well, welcome back, everyone. You totally haven't just already been back for five minutes. This is the official back back. That was like the satellite feed kind of back. Um, when last we left, our heroes were hanging out on the deck of a pirate ship that was not a high-tech space metal ship. It was a wooden ship, and it was all a lie. Um, but... Uh, Hal had just done dangerous mind tricks on a robot, discovering that it was, in fact, a little dragon person. And uh, the little dragon person could tell something was going on. And he told the other one, who was clearly just a normal robot, to run downstairs and uh, get some help. Which is what the party was asking for anyways. So, uh, here we are. Has the second pers robot person reemerged with quote unquote help? Or all oh, you chilling on deck? I think you've got a moment here before 
a second robot person reappears if you want to do any sort of planning or positioning of yourselves. Has his port authority. It's, it's just a dumb. Can we all get together for a group photo? Let's get the um, let's get the fog off uh, off port. Let's get the let's get the port side fog. Everyone to get. Excuse Hal. Yes. Um, no. Let me help you affix <laughs> your tablet him. into this extendable telescoping stick. You see, uh, you can vaguely make out through the fog the shape of Hal back behind this guy going. <laughs> Hal is my grandson. That's uh, I was just talking yeah. into the tablet again. Yeah, he's the one on the Ayun pad. That's what the I stands for, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Ancient Aslanti technology. <laughs> I mean, they were pretty advanced. You know, they, they had discovered, you know, space travel before yeah. the end of their world. So mm -hmm. it's reasonable to think that they had an iPad. Well, so did oh, the Androphans, and look where that got him. Well, I didn't say it uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before uh, the help comes from below decks, how about the definitely kobold person who is on deck just make a friendly will save? As uh, Don't forget he has a minus two to that. <laughs> uh, wow. As as uh, Dan just kind of looks at him and says, Oh, come now. We're old friends. That's a seven. Oh, excellent. That passes, uh, right? Mm -mm. No. No. Uh, I have planted the concept in the mind of the subject, genuinely believing he believes it's his own, uh, that we are, in fact, old friends, as uh, <laughs> I cast So Thought. Nice. That's fun. Oh, cool. <clears throat> Just simple well. enough, an idea that's fairly clear can be conveyed in one or two sentences. Uh, and it's um, permanent. It's permanent? Yeah. Nice. He's a permanent BFF. Sweet. Wow. <laughs> Well, uh, robots start emerging from under the stairs after this, and uh, this is where we want to stay. Done. Yeah, I was going to use this interim to cast shield off a wand uh, before the everything, uh, as okay. is standard with port authority. Sure, uh, port authority shield protocol it's for our safety right. and yours. Shield. <laughs> So we have uh, three of these little robots emerge, followed by a weird-looking fella. I'm gonna pop McGillicuddy him on the screen here. <laughs> it's like looking into a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this Your is a disguise is not quite up to this image, but it was an <laughs> attempt. You can see he's um. He is very tall, close to seven feet, and curiously gaunt with elongated uh, arms and legs. He's a yellow-skinned creature with what appear to be black polyps of some sort on his uh, elongated head. Um, and he blinks several times uh, with his multi-lidded eyes and um, clears his throat uh, and puts a uh, what appears to be a pen in or a quill, rather, into a, a pocket on his shirt and says quite simply, oh, Who are you people? Port uh, Authority. Yeah, Can't uh, you see me casting a shield on myself? Apparently. It is the uh, new normal. <laughs> we got word that you did not have your required plastic bag for safety in water travel. <laughs> we are here to issue citations for improper safety gear. He's going to roll a sense motive on that. Uh-oh. I didn't say that. Oh. That wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm still 25 from him. Alright, uh, so what does Crispin get on his bluff? Well, this that? is going to be bad. 
Can we aid? Let's aid. Yeah, let's, let's all... Aid. Let's aid, gang. I don't nope. you. This is the only bluff I could beat. <laughs> I mean, I'll take the aids. I don't need them. I aid. Yeah, great. I aid. Sweet. Anybody, anybody else want to assist there? Nah. No? Uh, that's yeah, gonna, gonna to... let you dangle in the wind. <laughs> that's gonna take. Uh, me I will to... say, if <laughs> they're all 17. rolling to believe it, this one that I'm still maintaining contact in has a minus two to that bluff. <laughs> oh yeah, that's seventeen <laughs> total with with the assist. Um, now the main leader alien one is is gonna say uh, this. Seems quite strange, um, but I, I believe you'll see that our, our plastic bags or what have you are all in order, and, 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 and I'm an alien also. I'm very frightening, as you can plainly see. The smartest course of action for you lot would be to, um, exit my ship and run away and let everyone know that we beat you up super super bad and um I think he's gonna uh, roll an intimidate with yeah. like a minus 12 or what <laughs> that was that was super uh, scary yeah how does one resist intimidation just um, can, no uh, like he told us he was an alien while yeah. telling us he had the plastic bags on which he clearly doesn't he does not he, have any plastic bags well yeah. um that, Hal's close enough to still hear all this right yeah, he can the hear. The fog is but blocking sound. See. Yeah, so he can't I'm see the alien now. Uh, well, he did get a, a 36 on his intimidate. What? Holy crap! Wow. wow! All right. And I guess you uh, are so scary and an alien. You're all scared, and he got a 22 on his bluff. So well, well, I got a 21 on his liars. <laughs> seems that your plastic bags are quite see-through. <laughs> So we have the fanciest here. space plastic bags. You wouldn't understand with your human technology. So get out of here. So what was he trying to do with that intimidate? Were you trying to improve our like who's he trying to demoralize us? Was he trying he, to improve our I think he's trying to get you to leave him? the boat. <laughs> yeah, I think he was trying to demoralize you with the idea that you would then run away. Uh, well, I'm immune to a fear condition for a no, like a totally human reason. So like, seems like a I'm just gonna reason. nod, smiling, like I don't get it. That's messed up. Hey, could that a uh, spoopy alien um, make a will save? As I tell him, we'll drop the charade. I don't want to make a will save. But you don't love all of these saver suck psychic spells <laughs> just screwing up all of your combats. I got an eleven on my will save. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so that is the spell suggestion, and I just suggested to him that he just drop the charade. Suggestion. It makes it sound reasonable. Wow. Don't you love this spell, Sam? For two episodes in a row, you know, the suggestion spell just has to go and screw things up. And you see, um, he sort of. And Crispin already left. He was he was afraid. <laughs> he's like, Yikes! Yeah, he's like, just he dove over the side. He, he's like packing his stuff up and he's moving away from the lake altogether. Why? So I'm, uh, I am going to go and try to make amends with my cousin Linux. <laughs> Hey, that's not an alien. <laughs> um, yeah, so he lets the disguise self spell drop, and you see it's an old human man who's about a foot shorter than he looked a minute ago. He's he's not yellow. And um Did you call me yellow? <laughs> so, um I not sure why I did that. That seems weird. Um, anyways, at the time. Yes, it seemed yeah. reasonable for a moment. No. Just the moment before, it was all yellow. That was <laughs> quite a cold play on your part. I don't. Yes, 
<laughs> understand. Oh, well, death the stars. All right, you successfully convinced Adam to leave right now. <laughs> <laughs> just log off. Goodbye. Yeah, I'm just like, oh wow, only quit. one yeah. streamer on here, and it's me on my phone. Cool. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Although we did get the attention of Haster. <laughs> um. Yeah, so the guy standing there goes, um, that was very strange, but, uh, anyways, get, get out of here. I'm, I'm terribly frightening. I was alien being from beyond the stars. You wouldn't even believe it if I told you. Scoot. What if we told you that we were the space force? I'm going to roll a bluff on that one because <laughs> Skynet doesn't even know what that is necessarily, but those two words sound great together. It's a 31, Sam. Two on my son's motive. <laughs> oh, there's another two on that if it's an opposed bluff check. So that's a 30. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Oops. Um, so he looks a little bit nervous about that and then he goes listen I've got a pretty sweet thing going here no one wants to fight a ship full of aliens and killer robots most people assume we're the technic league and they just hand us all their money and their cool stuff how much do you need me to pay you to just walk away and tell everyone that I beat you up super bad with my alien might and evil machinations. What are you doing here, really? That will determine whether or not I walk away from this ship. And he so, uh, turns Cal around. the word pay, and he is suddenly standing <laughs> right here next to this guy. Who can't see him because I forgot I also have solipsism, so I'm invisible to the target of my thing after two turns. <laughs> nice. So, um, yeah, he turns around to face into a spotlight that has just suddenly appeared over him. Um, so he's very dramatically lit with shadows and it all goes sort of black and white. And he says, Long ago, in my misguided youth, I Power worked the for the. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I worked for the Bank of Abadar. I knew that money made the world go round, sure. But I was oblivious to the various misdeeds and abuses that a preponderance of money can often lead one to commit. And as I rose in rank, I saw more and more of these abuses, till finally I could take it no longer. I quit the bank and worked for a time as a sort of outlaw. I stole from the rich, gave to the poor, that sort of thing, but found it was pretty scary and um, they just didn't really like giving away money once I stole it and just, you know, I didn't have the stomach for the hero thing. So as I grew older and wiser, I decided to just say screw it. Became a pirate. Now I just steal stuff with an army of kobolds and no one knows it's us. And then we can show up in a city wherever with our ill-gotten gains and be like, give us your finest pies. And they do. And they have no idea that we're paying for the pies with the very money we stole from them. And that makes the pies so much sweeter. You have no idea. So are pies your main motivation? Pies and money, yes. Cut How many? Rice pies. Oh. How how many pies would we have to pay you to assume your alien form in front of our employer? <laughs> would he hurt me? No. I'm going to roll a bluff real quick. Hold on one sec. <laughs> oh, uh, and I'm going to switch the target of my hypnotic gaze to him. Take a 17 on, on the bluff. die for a 35. Oh, and I got my best sense motor over the night with a 14. Mm -hmm. 12. Okay, so over <laughs> Also, this double. guy can see me again. <laughs> Surprise! Yeah, no. You'll be absolutely fine. The most sensible individual that I have worked for since the necromancer jobs. <laughs> and if it's... And... Oh, go ahead. 
Oh, and Dane would just point to his his kobold BFF and say, "Oh, he can vouch for us. Uh, he and I go way back." It's true, though I have no specific memories of <laughs> our long and storied friendship. We've we've been through a lot together, like you know that time and that other time. Uh, I guess. The oh, montage plays in the background, yeah. like it's the like Romy and Michelle's right. like right. music. They're like on roller coasters really and like on a carousel and running down the, the beach. Six foot and, seven, yeah. deaf you know, gray skinned human, human pushing a kobold <laughs> in a swing. It's like, like Hi, uh, uh, the the mind parasites in Rick and Morty, the ones that could put themselves into right. happy yeah. memories. I remember that episode. Look that Craig left during what every time I talk, Craig's just like, no, I'm it's like, no. Honestly, classic, that cold play, that cold play joke was <laughs> a bridge too far. <laughs> Craig's out. <laughs> Craig has very little tolerance for puns. Yeah. You think you'd accept it with arms wide open, but wait, no, that was <sighs> crap, but that was Pearl Jam. That is Creed. Creed. That oh no, Creed. Oh, Creed? Dang it. You're going to force I mean, they all with the worst go, band in Coldplay? Boo, 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 boo. Oof, for what it's worth. Although Coldplay <laughs> is a little bit more of a dulcet tone. Hmm. That brought Craig back. Thank you. Hey, Craig's back. <laughs> That's Craig also because I'm recording our Skype our, uh, thing window. We, everybody could hear Craig. Nice. <laughs> they got to hear the all uh, dulcet Craig tones of Craig Bot. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, best friends forever with the ship captain he says oh well uh, would I be able to come back to my ship after and resume my life of piracy my voice is completely different now uh, no you would not be able to continue that at least on the shores of this lake I am a protector of, of said area and I would prefer that you take your piracy elsewhere of course, this will be after you your meeting with our patron and employer. So with that said, yes. I'm going to roll another bluff on that one. It's a 16 on the die for a 34. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say there's a, a huge penalty to that one for being implausible. because It doesn't was matter. Go for it. And he still takes still... a negative two. <laughs> Yeah, and he still makes it by 20. Um, so he's going to say, um, well, this, um, this sounds like a pretty sweet deal to me. I mean, how much money are you offering? Uh, of course. Pies. Uh, how much pie money? I interest yeah. you in popcorn. Pop? I'll regale you with all of the details of blockchain when I can corner you on this ship. And, well, here, let's save that for later as Skynet moves a little bit closer. And, um, all these little robots around him go, go um, so, uh, I'm a boss. Uh, this all seems pretty weird. I mean, we, we got a good thing going here. You can't just, just drop it. Just because some bird and weird mustache guy tells you to. So, but uh, I, I agree, but I mean, I, just, I don't want to fight anybody. I mean, clearly, these are good people. They're just trying to do their jobs, and I'm just trying to do my job. And the pies, you understand. Stolen pies are so much better than given pies. I'm afraid I can't risk it. And, um, I think I'm going to need you to roll for initiative. Oh, man, but I didn't even tell him about my cousin, Raspberry Pie. He'll love him. I'm dismissing heightened awareness for an extra four on this roll. All right. Too bad. What is my... Why don't you announce your initiative first, then, Skynet? That'll be a 15 for Skynet. All right, and how about Alligator? Team total. What team? 
16. One six. And, uh, I thought Thrasher. you were just saying 10 weird because all I heard was teen. <laughs> yeah, like, God, <laughs> teen. That's, well, that's like how we pronounce it on stuff. our podcast. I would. Well, that's a, that's definitely how we pronounce it. Cultural sensitivity. That's definitely uh, how we pronounce it on STF. <laughs> that's a 10. You got a 10. Some possum pronunciation yeah, some, here. Some of that possum pronunciation. You got it. Um, how about Crispin? I got an 11. Nice and dangerous. not really nice. Terrible. Oh, but super, super, what I got. Nice. <laughs> Dean coming in hot with an eight total. Mm. And how about Hal? Hal got a seventeen. And how? About and Hal? he is uh, technically invisible to him until he does Hal something, Hal but everybody else can uh, see him. Hal Technically in a nice, nice, nice. Save us. Have like 30 people to roll initiatives for. Nice, nice, nice. Save us. Have like 30 people. I just made them. Minus three. That's what I read. Sounds about right. From one GM to another. Trust me. You're you're good. So minus something. Oh, from one GM to another. I'm an idiot. I opened up a tab. I apologize to everybody watching. I opened up a tab that had our stream in the background and I'm like why am I suddenly hearing everything double see everything twice uh, oh and this I'm is all going to get edited right. out in the uh, post definitely <laughs> was not uh, doing something else uh, you know what <laughs> I know what he's going to do uh Give me a Hal suddenly becomes visible to him, and hold give on, me a you. will save. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Gotta get my nat ones in here. DC sixteen. I don't think Jero can hear me. Oh, Ooh, I didn't see wait, that guy. On Jero. There. Yeah, I yeah. was gonna say you're not. That Anybody guy wasn't on there for me, so I was like, "What is going on?" Yeah, it was before. It was like unsorted. Yeah. My audible. Yeah, yeah you know yes. you are. I'm oh. just an idiot. All right, I'm getting confused. All right. Um. Yeah, you're ahead of that guy because. Oh, so I am ahead of him. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you are first. Yeah, that's why I started going because I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, but yeah. Uh, in that case, uh, this dude here, pirate captain, will save. Vibing. Ooh, I like that music. <laughs> we gotta get that chip tune stuff. Natural one on the will save. Okay. I have just affected him with paranoia. So he considers oh God, was everything around him to be hostile, including the other pirates. Wow. And whenever he is adjacent to two or more creatures, his paranoia overwhelms him and he takes a minus two penalty on attack rolls, weapon damage rolls, ability checks. Skill checks and saving throws. Also, and if any of those people provoke, <laughs> well, and if any of his former allies provoke, he has to take attacks of opportunity against them too. Yeah, he has to take an attack of opportunity against anything within his range. Nice, nice, nice. That's awesome. I love that spell. It's mm -hmm. level one for mesmerist, right? Yep, it's a level one spell. It's level two for psychic. Yeah, so sick. All right, so let's see. Just like look in here. I think what we're going to do is we're going on to orange here. The orange pirate is going to take a five foot step away from Ned into this little square here and throw this weird little, it looks like an onion. Uh, hmm. He's gonna throw it. Yeah, Dana. Yeah, Dane, I'm sorry. So, that's a natural one. <laughs> uh, so, I'm gonna just roll a d8 to see what direction that misses in. One, two, three, four. It goes off the side of the ship, and nobody <laughs> knows what would have happened with that. Oh. Blows up our skiff. <laughs> no, it explodes a hole in the hell in the hole, and now the ship is beginning to sink. 
Um, so this guy is going to cast defensively. Roll for that. Makes it easily. And then you see how many three copies of him appear oh. as, uh, he appears to have mirror imaged himself and um see he's kind of in a tough spot so he's just gonna take a five foot step across the stairs to get a little bit away from some people and that brings us to Aline hey um I'm gonna try this we'll see what happens I'm within five feet of green. So I'm gonna do what is colloquially colloquially known as the uh, full a, full round action. Is that what it's colloquially known as? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Great. round these yeah. parts. Just round these parts, y'all. <laughs> these parts. I'm going with a claw claw bite, casting fantasy iPod to one side, just over the side of the ship. Oh no, um, my Zune. <laughs> <laughs> Ali makes a full sort of like, like she was previously. Uh, as the call to your nephew actually goes through. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> finally. He's like, all right, I'll be right back. I got to deal with some guys. Uh, Aunt Ali, <laughs> Um, Okay, so let's see. I've got three D20s here. We're going to say this glittery one is going to be a bite because that's, uh, do you have to start with Claw Claw? No, we're going to say bite first. Ooh, that's an 11 to hit green, which I'm going to assume is not it. Yeah, 11's a miss. Okay, so we're going to go in with the claw claw. We both claws are free. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, one of those is a... Oh, gosh. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. 13 to hit. And... Um, a 13 hits flat-footed exactly. Great. 13, that's one claw. Other claw is... um. 18 on the die plus what seven so that'll hit it great these are such tiny numbers roll too deep we're gonna roll this in the little digital thingy because i have not figured out a good way to roll uh d3 yet d3 oh my gosh okay so that's two two ones well, that's plus definitely plus not a three. good way to roll 2d3. <laughs> no, that's it wasn't it. Three, three, so three, six points damage total. Uh, right. She's very distressed by the fact that she's just thrown her fantasy iPad overboard. Not well, she has scratched up uh, the green robot next to her. And um, did you want to take a five foot step? You good staying in the corner there? Um... Yeah, I'll hang right here. This should be fine. I won't regret this, I'm sure. I never do. <laughs> all right, Skyned. Uh, all right, so Skyned is going to attempt to cast defensively. I'm going to roll a d20 for that first. No, <laughs> Skyned loses the spell with the one on the die. Um, Skyned uh, opens his mouth, and then both of his eyes turn this obnoxious blue color. Um, and, you know, blue screen of death, both eyes. You can kind of see it for a second. He's just standing there for a moment, waiting for Windows to update. <laughs> it's cool. It'll be fine in like 15 <laughs> rounds or something. Um, so he's not going to move. That's He'll it. sit on 99% done for three days. <laughs> yep, totally. And somehow also it's got the Mac pinwheels in the center too for, <laughs> for extra. Well, that's your yeah. problem right there. <laughs> Yeah, so that's going to be his turn. He's not going to move. He's not going to do anything. Very nice. Um, so a level that, one spell. That's going to bring us to Crispin. All right, let me Can ask you something. we briefly celebrate our 250 before we go to Crispin? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone oh, we got the die. 250. Yeah, and it looks All like right. the uh, person that did it left a uh, message, if you can see that on there, Sam, on the... Uh, I can't see anything. I'm if you go to the actual Extra Life team page in that... Uh, Handy Dandy Nightbot link. Can't be talking crazy. Can in honor of that $250, I am five foot stepping to the northeast. Uh, as honor. is customary on this channel anytime anyone gives us money for children. In um, honor of that $250, I'm going to take my 
big D20. Put it in your mouth <laughs> and spit it D20. into the dice yeah. oh, you, no. yeah. you have to swallow it. We did it. I we definitely didn't donate everyone. 20 bucks and leave a message that said, eat the dice, Sam. <laughs> oh, you have no choice. Ah, that was the message. <laughs> yeah. I did not swallow the die. I would die. Yeah, that's well, on our team page now, the most yeah, recent donation yeah. four minutes ago. Eat the dice, Sam. Uh, <laughs> spit it right back out. Well, well, the next stream will be for, you know, dice choking awareness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it's the new chair. Memorial and... Sam. Memorial Sam stream. <laughs> Just, yeah. I um, spat a 10. I spat yeah. a 5. I can't roll for anything tonight. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so let me ask you this, Sam. These squares with the railing on it, can I actually stand in those squares? It seems like I could, because the railing seems to be on the back end of those squares, but I just wanted to be... Yeah. All right, yeah, so yeah. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move. Just kind of get out of the way so I have some shots, and then I'm going to cast Gravity Bow. Sick. And that'll be my turn. Fancy. All right, that takes us to Dane. Okay, Dane, as a standard action, is going to say, Port Authority, we've got this, as he inspires courage. Everyone gets a plus two on attack and damage. Nice. Uh, and he draws his plus one longsword and will take a five foot step to the east to kind of keep himself within range of this not alien pirate captain. Right. Well, that brings us to Green Robot. Green Robot says, um, it doesn't say anything at all. It's just gonna step up around Ned. And with the flank, it's going to go for that bite. That's oh, right. Boy. It's robotic mouth opens up and there's weird lizard like teeth inside. Teeth that crackle with electricity. Mozilla. Oh, no, I have to do math. Where are my character sheets? Mozilla. On the bite. That is going to be a 19. So 15 does not hit on the bite is what I'm getting. AC 20. Troll Skynet. It's actually a, a 17 with the flank. Is now that less it. than 20, Sam? I don't know. The, the, the um, flank can we just 20. go over that a little bit? We can roll it around. Maybe pull the crap. No, yeah, you missed. Flank. No? Yep. All right, moving on. Let's see. We've got another friend here. And this friend... This red swashbuckling pirate is going to step down to Aline and go for her with the cutlass. Whoa. So violent. Another natural one. So he nice. absolutely whiffs with the cutlass. And he falls off the ship. See ya. And he dies. <laughs> no, he grows into an actual dragon. Now, the Ooh. one kobold, the only kobold on the ship, since he is standing next to Hal already, uh, is going to go for Hal with his sword. Uh, that's That's got to hit. That's like a 23. Jero? Oh, 23. Yeah, 23 that versus That is Hal. almost certainly a hit. I don't know why I'm bothering to switch over here to check. Yes! That is, in fact, a hit, believe it or not. All right, you ready for this damage? Uh, not Two really. Two damage. <laughs> oh. Two damage from the small cutlass. He screams out, I'm dying! <laughs> <laughs> and it is your turn. Okay. Uh... Okay, two damage. Uh, let's see. What is he going to do? He broke his hypnotic stare with this one to cast that thing because of the way uh, his uh, part of his stare works. 
can't maintain it if he uses the invisibility part of it. Uh, so, you know what? He's going to... What do I have? You know what? He's gonna... He's not the uh, most level-headed person in a combat. He's not gonna save his good spells for anything important. He is going to glare at this guy and make me a will save. And I've got that uh, Actually, nice. I have to cast that defensively. Uh, which I think I have a bonus that... Oh, I do not have a bonus. I have the opposite of a bonus. Awesome. Uh, but that is a 19 on the die, so he makes it. So give me a will save. Um, are you glaring at the kobold? Uh, at you whichever one of them attacked me. Was it him that attacked me? Uh, yeah. Okay. The only kobold. All right, I was answering the it's... chat. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. This one's see. a robot. He's got an 11. An 11? It is a, a DC 17. So I cast uh, Oniriac, I think is the uh, pronunciation. Horror. Oh. Uh, you cause the subject to believe it is being attacked by a creature out of its nightmares. Uh, oh, and also this will end my concentration on the uh, captain. Okay. So he does not have to worry about his thing anymore. Uh, each round, the subject makes a full attack action against the creature. Uh, each round on its turn, after making a full attack against the imaginary creature, the subject can attempt a new saving throw to end the effect. And they're also fatigued for one minute after the uh, spell ends. Poor and that Cobalt. is around a level. So for the next five rounds, he sees something out of his nightmares right here on the other side of him, and he has to attempt to attack that. Surprise, it's soap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And well, then uh, Hal will take a five-foot step this way. Well, that brings us back to Orange Robot. Orange Robot is going to, after some careful consideration, gonna try to climb on Ned. I'll roll a climb check. A Not a CMB. CMB? A CMB check, rather. Oh, um, sorry. That's My only... CMD is... Freaking garbage, dude. It's 12. I'm sure you've exceeded it. No, I are got you, an 11. Are you a vexing dodger? What are you, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm a, he's a vexing dodger, but because You're he's small, he has a penalty. Vexing dodger, you? <laughs> he has a penalty to CMD. The minus one ruined it. Yeah? There yeah, you miss me. So, uh, just slide off me. Keflon Don. There's nothing to grab onto. It was all that race. Flicked with ah, oh, Jeff. <laughs> I was gonna You're like, oh, is this cauliflower? <laughs> oh, oh, weird. This keto is fine, darling. <laughs> all right, let's see. Let's see, one ten foot square per level. I don't like that. I'm gonna take a five foot step back to where he started and he is going to cast a spell let's see okay a transparent shimmering wall through which creatures and objects appear to be wildly distorted by viewers appears let's see any creature that passes through the wall is immediately assailed by overwhelming vertigo i'm going to need fortitude saves from let's see it's gonna be a, I'm gonna draw it here draw sort of thingy here that is a bad square is it on the token layer for the map layer, I'm not seeing anything. Nor do I. Uh, yeah, it's in on the GM layer. Object layer. Okay, ready? This time it's real. We're going to need fortitude saves from ah. Ian and Ned. I don't like that. As they are like sucked up all. into 
a um, wall of nausea. And what about his two his... buddies? Does he have that uh, feat that lets that meta magic feat that lets you ignore your friends in this? No, um, doesn't he currently view all his friends as enemies? Mm-hmm. No, I said that one doesn't work on him anymore. I said he's oh, not the under the effect over. of that. Oh, because it's a concentration. A... Oh, I have no <laughs> idea. Ah, well, I'm gonna leave it there anyways, because yeah. he's all sorts of messed up. So they're gonna have to roll their fort saves too, which is gonna go really well. I so... assumed you had a Technomancer dip and had that going in your spell cache <laughs> to keep your cache concentration alive. Wait, I don't oh, think no. it's concentration. I think it's, it's one round uh... per level. No, I, thought I, I don't know if it's different. It concentration to maintain for paranoia. Uh... I mean, I'm, I'm oh, just reading Oh, no, it's not it concentration off. to maintain. Yeah, no, it's not concentration. Level. Yeah. 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 Okay, so he is It's dismissible. Oh, and so is Onera yeah. Core. Neither one of them requires concentration. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, so no, he oh, still oh, thinks yeah. we're enemies. <laughs> All um, right, so Aline and uh, Ned, we need... Fortitude saves against nausea. Uh, that's a 12 for Aline. That's going to be a fail. This isn't mind affecting, paralysis, poison, or stun. It is mind affecting. Illusion. All right. Let's adjust that there. Three on the die for a 10. Ooh. That is also a fail. Aussie. So um, everybody in that rectangle is currently sickened for um a little bit i'm gonna need acrobatics checks from all of you as well uh, so many checks. Trying to dice. nobody told me we had to roll dice in this game <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's you... a minus one a, a negative one total a negative I... one total Uh, So you fall prone as you are (laughs) just really, really sick. And um, how about Ned? Well, I could do much better than Izzy. (laughs) At least two. I also rolled a two on the die, so calm down. (laughs) I rolled a two. Four a two. Uh, Yeah, you fall down. I'm prone. And second? You are currently prone and nauseous. Nauseous. Yeah. Whoa, buddy. That's so, a uh, different that's game. Good. That's fun. Um. So, Aline, you are prone. You are in the wall of nausea, and you are currently nauseated. So fun. I had such plans to bull rush a friend right off the edge of the boat, but now I'm sick. You know what makes um, me feel better when I'm sick is my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my Dramamine? Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's got uh, a little bracelet. Aliyah goes through like her, <laughs> uh, just a tiny bag. It just I got my stories. in here somewhere. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna, oh shoot, standing up provokes, huh? Yeah, he's nauseous too, though. <laughs> well. Not that you she necessarily know that, out of but the he's way. growing up, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's gross. I you can't. don't know he's nauseous, but he's totally You don't know he's right? nauseous, but you're getting some context clues. <laughs> um, God, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna stand up? I'm gonna stand. I'm attempting to stand. Let's see what happens. So what is nausea? And yeah, well, money? I'm gonna roll. Yeah, and like he, I guess he can try to attack or not. Um, so I'm gonna stand. I feel like this whole yeah. nauseated thing is gonna impact my ability to bull rush anyone. Uh huh. Because yeah. like it doesn't like allow you to do anything. Yeah, I think you <laughs> yes. can only take move. It will, right? in fact, impact that. Yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna need you to make another fortitude save because uh, you're still in that wall. So many, so many fort saves. Okay, that's a 14? That uh, I'm going to need you to make another acrobatics check. <laughs> and then just fall right back down. <laughs> oh, that's a one. Total. So you throw up, fall down, stand up, throw up, fall down. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm gonna we stay all here. been there before. Yeah, I'm, I'm never going to keep her down. Yeah, this weekend. I don't like too. boats. <laughs> 
I remember when they rushed me when I got on this podcast, and it was... I'm kidding. (laughs) Uh, All right. Well, that was fun. All right, Skynet. All right, so Skynet's going to take... So, um, Sam, if I were to go directly to the east, I see that there's a little bit of this box in the upper like left-hand corner of this square. Would that still be considered in the cloud, considering it's such a tiny little corner that you got there going on? Like if you move five feet to the right? Yeah, if I five foot... I you're, you're out of it with a five All foot right, so crawl. five foot crawl to the east, provoking. Because oh, I'm yeah. prone. So prone AC 16. Uh, that is a 14 on the bite. So just a, a gentle little <sighs> glancing off. Um, so on the ground, I'm going to attempt... Am I still nauseated if I'm out of the cloud? Um, well, the next turn you won't be. All right. So uh, I'm going to just... <clears throat> Avoiding the bite, look up at the kobold come robot and uh, just vomit lightly on their feet, I guess, and do nothing. Because I don't know what else out? I'm going to do. I'm I'm nauseated, so. Nice. Um, that's my turn. Which what? I think crawling as a five foot. Oh, no, it's just a move action. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was worse. But as what? Uh, yeah, what I can exactly do a full round and out. still vomit. It's a free action, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> free action. I, I, saw, I saw James Jacobs errata did on the boards. That you <laughs> pretty sure it's a new type of action called involuntary <laughs> action. A puke action. Mm-hmm. What comes out when Skynet vomits? You don't want to know. Rice. <laughs> I believe it's rice to college. <laughs> what, what happens when like the internet power. throws up? I guess 4chan? 4chan shows up on the deck. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, Alexa came out. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing. Uh, Go on yeah. punching cell all over again. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Crispin is up. What what is this token that just arrived on the show? That that was Alexa. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, okay. After I threw it up I and it, threw up in Alexis, like, do you, oh, you guys play have an actual Alexa? sicko mode okay. on gotcha. Spotify? Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, she all right, was a, so uh, character in the previous one. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, I'm gonna just try to do some damage here. Uh, I guess I'm gonna. Sh- do I still think that these are robots? Um, yeah. Sweet. So that would they mean they still look like robots. My yeah, so favorite he get enemy bonus. bonuses will will apply here. Ah, uh, you think it does? <laughs> do I? I don't know. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna try to take out this robot. Yeah. Uh, that's totally a totally normal robot. Uh, in front of this totally normal human. Uh, that is Ned, and take a shot here. See what I can do. Come on. Oh, how's a natural 20, Sam? Oh, Ooh, All yeah, right. Sam. Um, can you roll to confirm and also roll concealment for me? Because uh, kind of hard to just roll the concealment it. first. So I'm just going to roll that and roll 20. I don't even want to roll to confirm if I don't get to conceal. Boo. Uh, hey, blurred? 73. Oh, it's All the right. fog. So that's good. I got 73 right. on that concealment. So let me roll so to good. confirm. That's an 18 on the die. I'm assuming that's going to hit with uh, a 29. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's right. a critical hit. Nice. And it's Ooh. a long bow. So you're looking at a times three hit. With times gravity bow damage. on. Oh, and God. inspire <laughs> adds plus two. So you get to add another six. On and the end plus of that. four oh. for my uh, favorite enemy, too. So I'm going to also just roll that on roll 20 because it's too late to do math. All right, so it. that's going to be, let's see, 6d6 plus 4 plus, what do I get to for the, uh, yeah, for the Inspire, the courage. Inspire courage? Yeah, so you'll get, which tripled. is also tripled with the crit. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Does, nice. so does everything triple? Yeah. Uh, Except yeah, for none point. of it was precision, right? So, yeah. Oh, yeah, everything yeah. triples. All right, so if I just roll this, can we just times it by 3? Like. So 60 points of damage. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not <laughs> quite right. No, so that's going to be... I'm sorry. We shouldn't do it that way. So that's... Well, it's 66 plus um, 12 plus 6. So... I'll add another 
12 onto that. Yeah, four. basically 12 more than that. So 32. So you absolutely exploded this little robot, which in death reveals itself to be a kobold. <laughs> I don't hate you as much as I thought I did. Take back four points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, so yeah. Uh, and then I'm, can I move into this Zelda pot squares or do I have to move around them? Yeah, they're kind of difficult to rain though. So you get half movement. All right, that's fine. I just want to move here to have a better shot at all of the enemies. And that will be my turn. I should have asked right. if you were a ranged character before I had Al use his. <laughs> it's in the name of my class. True. <laughs> a bow may have also been a giveaway, but who could say? Yeah, and you are on. also carrying a bow the entire time. Literally the first thing I described on my character, mm -hmm. but whatever, you know. With the bow, yep. Right, but yeah, that's that's up. my super effective turn. I feel like I'm a master at 1E now. Hang you it did up. it. Get, mm -hmm. Let me get the merit badge. I'm good. You 1 would I, I totally 1 e All over that kobold. <laughs> Boom. Hey, um... Smarter rule having knowledge or peoples than me. Uh, do I, if I recall right, Cap'n Crunch has mirror image up with three images. Mm -hmm. uh, how would a spell that would target a, a living creature work in that case? Could I not is it like cast it? Mind affecting AOE or is it like a verse touch or something? Uh, is it is a w will save making spell. If, if it's mind affecting, it's still anything. gonna hit him normally. Yeah, as Ooh. long as it's not a ranged touch, you're just gonna hit him. Totally. Yeah, if it's not a directed attack, like a directed melee, directed range, or touch, then you're good. Because okay. like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Continuing the performance, so everyone gets that benefit. Uh, make a make a will save, Captain. All right. Um, that's actually decent. That's a 22. Yeah. He had uh, penalties on him, though, so probably a 24. Or a 20, rather. It doesn't go up. Uh, in, in either case, he he shakes it off. Uh, I tried to do a thing. It failed. Uh, so. You, you, I would have said, and, and he would have ignored, uh, dismiss that mirror image spell and let's just talk and he could you know, ignore appropriately <laughs> All right. and no movement okay we're gonna do a five foot crawl for green robot and that's its whole turn and then uh, this one is also gonna do a five foot crawl it's still kind of in the barf gas, so it's good. To do. And it fails its save, but it's already on the <laughs> ground, so it's just still nauseous. And this kobold is gonna full round attack against the darkness. He rolled a six to hit the darkness. Okay, and he also, at the end of his turn, gets another save against it. Which, let me just make sure it is still the same DC. Yes, it is. After making its full attack, it can attempt a new saving throw. Still DC 17. Oh, he got a 12. He almost can't get a 17. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Hal is back up. Okay. Uh, Hal. Hmm. I think what I want to do. Uh, is that fog opaque? Like, it, it, like, he wouldn't have line of sight to things on the other side of the fog? Um, It grants concealment. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I was just chance. trying to check. Yeah, it just looks gross. So he's going to have to move up to do anything against the big boss man. Uh, you got three enemies on your side still. Yeah. Uh, this guy is going to be distracted for another four rounds, so he is going to go 15 feet over here, and you know what? He's got his stone bow out. Uh, 
he is just going to, though I have on my hero thing, <laughs> I'm using my adamantine rocks, which that's a waste against these guys because they're not robots, but he is going to uh, fire at him with the stone bow. Who's he firing at? Uh, this one. Okay. This one gets an AOO against you. Uh, isn't he busy in combat with his... Uh... Oh, yeah, he can't because he's, <laughs> yeah. a... he's fighting the darkness. Oh, uh, why that's... can't he? Just for my own understanding. What? So why can't he do that? Oh, actually, you know what? He... No, because, yeah, even though he's in combat, he would still get an AOO. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, because... Yeah, because as far he's just considered to be in combat with it, and he would get that anyway. Yeah, so he can take that AOL. Right, that's a for your own edification. Way, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. I I rules lawyer and didn't even know it. Yeah, thank you for understanding the system in one day more than yeah. we do after doing this for a year. And to be fair, if there's it's one thing accident. Starfinder it's does, accidental do it, it's, uh, AOL is everything it. in Starfinder provokes an AOL. <laughs> Uh, oh, only three things provoke yeah. AOS and mm -hmm. Starfire. Well, let's not get, go, go down that road. Yeah. Like, we don't uh, want to get into a Starfire. What do you say uh, he got? It's a 23 to hit. Uh, yes, that is a hit. All right, one damage. Okay, and I rolled an eight. Uh, what does this weapon do? Is... Why is that so high? Oh, because of the... Well, it's plus two, you said, right? For the... Uh... Uh, For what? The Inspire? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's why that's a neat. Uh, so that is a 16 to hit. Regular AC. Uh, 16 will hit. Okay. Uh, so I need to find a Caltrip. Uh, oh, nice. Okay, and... Because that is the adamantine sling bullet that does... Oh no, that's just two attack. Oh, so that actually was a higher two attack than I thought it was. Uh, it doesn't do anything to damage. Uh, so that is just a seven. Seven damage. Seven damage? Yeah. Alright. He's looking like a very, very badly injured robot. Yeah, so this adamantine... Uh, Sling bullet just fires out of his bow and smacks him in the back of the head. <laughs> All right, and that takes us to Boss Man, who is gonna run down the stairs. Son of a bitch. Oops. Son of a now, biscuit. Uh, <laughs> son of a nut. Uh, it wasn't me or Izzy this yeah, time. Yeah, I'm oh gonna call God. that a win. Adam, you're it's welcome fine. anytime. We'll cut it out I'm high fiving post. you <laughs> through the top of my. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aline, you are up. You are still vomiting. Yeah, uh, I'm going to roll to the side. A five foot <laughs> roll crawl. Right. A totally not alligator, totally human roll. Totally yeah, one of those human. normal rolls. A not life a roll. roll. Right here. <laughs> and then uh, just a life on roll. The deck. Nice. All right, and that'll bring us to Skynet. Am I still nauseated? No, you you've been out for a turn, so. You... All right, I'm I'm chasing that bad boy down the stairs. So I guess, oh God, yeah, I guess that's move action, stand up, because I'm not gonna crawl after him. As fun as that would be, in very <laughs> end of Terminator Two, oh, I'm one. gonna stand up. Oh, one, yeah, right. I'm gonna stand up. And then I'm gonna head down the stairs, or dark, dark world, whatever, dark fate, the last one that came out. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna run downstairs, and uh, that's gonna be the whole of my turn. All right, and you get to see the different part of the map. Can you see it? No, I just no? see a darkened version of the original layer. I was looking at. No, still nothing. Still nothing. Move to the right. Zoom out of your map. It's on the same. Oh, yeah, that's it. I was just in the theater of the mind for a moment there. It's really yeah, dark. Yeah, no, in it looks there. great. Uh, <laughs> we are down in the, uh, the hold together, and I see him in front of that wonderfully detailed wooden door, Sam. Nice. 
Um, all right, Crispin, you are up. Oh, do I give chase as well? Well, let's do it. I'm going to go. I'm going to go down there too and see what I can see. So that's going to be 10 feet of movement to get to the stairs. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm going to take a shot. Uh, I'm going to do this with um, deadly aim on. So this will be a minus two to my attack. Try to get a little extra damage though. See what we can do. This is a human, right? This is a, t a for real human, right? This is a for real <laughs> human. IRL human. All right. This is that is my second favorite enemy. All right. So that's going to be with the minus two. Um. Sorry, I'm trying to find these sheets. All right. So that is a twenty-three to hit. I want you to roll me a D four for those mirror images. Let's say a four hits them. Let me roll my caltrop real quick. Well, that's a one on that. All right, so you pop an image. He's, he's down to two images and the real guy. All right, doing, doing what I can do to help. That's my turn. All right, Dane, you are up. Oh, when in Rome or the Lake of Mists and Veils. Dane is going to also give chase. You'll be fine, Howland. <laughs> Dally, new friend. Uh, I'll pop you over on the secret right side of the map where everybody watching this stream just can't see it for some <laughs> reason. It's uh, so wild ooh. in here right now. Oh, wow, this is great. I wish there was this a way to. Maker. Can you uh, make so that, that was just visible a... to me and I can move up to there and show his thing during that part of the fight? <laughs> hmm. wonder if I can. If I had 30 feet of movement to get down, I think I could be all the way off the stairs because I was just right by the staircase. Although I don't know how far down the stairs go. In any case, uh, hey, Captain, we'll save. Uh, we'll save, you say? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's going to be a 16. Oh, ho, ho. DC 17. Nice. All right. I, he gets the... Uh, I give him the suggestion... Which sounds totally reasonable, I think. Stop trying to run. There's too many of us. So he's just... If that, I, I think that's reasonable. Uh, and it's not obviously harmful to him. So... And we did that. obliterate one of his... Sailors. His robot friends. Yeah. But and, well, I'm just saying, like, it's not to even encourage. His friends. He doesn't that, remember that he's he, paranoid. Well, that's, that's true. Cool. Just to encourage that he is outnumbered and easily yeah. overwhelmed, you know. Yeah, he has no friends on this ship, Sam. Think about that. Ooh, Sam. Well, that was my whole move on a standard, uh, but did continue the performance free action. Uh, All right. Well, let's see. Since Hal is kind of by himself here as a visible one, um, green robot that's been getting beat up is going to throw that weird oniony thing at Hal. And um, it's a six. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a miss. I'm just going to roll for what direction he misses in. Five, so one, two, three, four, five. It falls right between the two of you. And it explodes, and horrible bugs come out, and they bite you and the kobold and the robot for one damage. Like a swarm grenade? Uh, that is actually a sting chuck. Hmm. Sting chuck is a foul bag made of a humanoid's head with the brain removed, and the skull heavily yeah. scored so that it bursts open when thrown. Ew. 
Lovely. I don't like that. Mm. It sounds like something from Horror Adventures. <laughs> it does. It does. From the Adventurer's Armory. That nasty. Oh, Here's a human skull full of mosquitoes. Enjoy. Yeah. It's pretty gross. <laughs> And now uh, this one is going to finish crawling out of the darkness, and that's all he gets because he was sick. And this one is going to jump down and go after Hal. Hal is just going to get murdered all by himself. <laughs> all um, by himself. Just, you know, I can't do anything. Yeah. 13 to hit. Uh, that is going to be a miss. All right, you're up. Alone against like 30 enemies. Okay. Looking at what kind of action it is to do this. Standard action, of course it is. Uh, so he is going to take the attack of opportunity from the kobold in order to. Actually. You know, I can try an acrobatics to get past him without taking it, correct? Yeah. It's versus his uh, C and D. Oh, yeah, with my plus it's one to acrobatics, this will be awesome. Uh, that is an 18. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Uh, then he is going to move 30 feet. And as a standard action... You see him tap something on this weird bodysuit that he has on under his nicer normal suit, and it starts glowing. And that is his turn. All right, and boss man uh, down here in the um, hold of doom where the viewers can't see um, sees um. He says, um, all right, I won't run any longer, but you must leave my ship. I can, um, uh, I, I'm not a fighter. Everyone usually just gives up. Um, what, what is it that you wanted? I, you wanted, I can't give you my pies. I draw the line at the pies. That's exactly what we want. Pie. You must fight. <laughs> or give up. us the pies. It's your choice. <laughs> I don't want to give you the pies. It's I thought it makes sense. The pies are lovely. I thought Skynet, uh, my fellow Port Authority member, wanted simply to have you speak with our employer and your alien form. Okay. I guess I can do that. It's only as as get... to bring a pie to such a meeting. It is customary. One pie in one mm, meeting. There will be several of us at this meeting. You should we bring no share. less than ten pies. Oh. <laughs> ten pies is ridiculous. Let's roll a diplomacy check. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, all right. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Ooh, that's a four. Uh-oh. He's so many up. pies we get, Sam. Five. Narrow his eyes. Four pies. Very, very serious, and he's going to say, three pies. you got a deal. <laughs> Master he's not going to push his luck any further there. He's like, yes, that, that's exactly, that's a perfect amount of pies. All right. I'm going to, I guess I can't really drop you out of initiative because. Not I, yet, I, Sam. Nobody knows what's going on. Yeah, these guys upstairs don't know that <laughs> happening. Yeah. All right. I'm, so... no, I'm not going to make any big shout about it. I'm just going to squawk and let them interpret it how they want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that could be in trouble, or we just got three pies. You don't know. Uh, alligator, you just finished throwing up, and um, you're <laughs> out of the nausea, so what you want to do? Okay, meaning I'm no longer nauseated also, right? right. Cool. Uh, am I, st I am still prone, though. 
I like crawled over here, so that feels like a... Yes? Yeah, you're still prone. Great, yes, yeah, still prone. So I'm gonna get up. Um, And I have to cross back through the nausea wall, so I'm not gonna do that to reach anyone else. Can I break one of the Zelda pots? Just yeah, go for enrage, it. I guess. <laughs> Maybe there's something, like a pie. Maybe I'll take, take a pie hostage. So she'll yell up to Hal, I'll be right there, you're doing great, hon. Um, oh, actually, I have a thing for that. I'm gonna use my battle cry and say, um, Christmas bonus, let out a battle cry, allies within, allies within 30 feet. Get a plus one attack. No, plus one morale bonus on attack. So uh, you can take that just as she does nothing. You do. This is wonderful. You're doing amazing. Everything you're doing, so good. Is he within 30 feet? Oh, God. He's no, way up there. he's super far. He's okay, yeah, so I'm she yells it and it does that. nothing. <laughs> um, I didn't even see your little token. That makes sense. So she yells that, does nothing. And that's just going to move over here. He and yells that. What? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, well, unarmed, I'm going to unarm strike to po just punch it. Just, I'm just uh, gonna just, punch it. Just roll damage. Yes. It's not gonna die. <laughs> Thank it's you. Pot. <laughs> mm, D8. Five, and then also the plot. The pot is gonna take a one D4 bleed. <laughs> nice. And the pot um definitely makes the Zelda kind of chattering pot sound effect. There Three blood in rupees in it from the from the fleet. <laughs> oh, it's filled with riced cauliflower. And, um, <laughs> yes! oh, it's a Complete. nice hat. A small green <laughs> bag. Sad. We can save your iPad. We found <laughs> plenty of cauliflower rice. Yeah, it looks like there's a nice hat in there. Yeah, so I don't know. Shout down for you. Is everyone okay down there? You, you good? That's, that's all I got. Yeah, we're just getting our steps in. We're fine. Oh, well, good. You, you gotta put it on the arm. You gotta put it on your health tracker. That's how the cloud gets it. <laughs> All right, and Skynet. Um, on top of this, Captain's already addled brain, Skynet is going to turn to him and say, let me refine the request that we've made of you. We would like you to reassume the more comfortable alien form and encourage your compatriots to Abandoned ship. Please roll well save. Is it higher than a 19? No. No, it's a 15. <laughs> I have a suggestion for you. And it involves <laughs> exactly what I just told you to do. <laughs> so on top of stopping your running away, now we've encouraged you to reassume your alien form and tell everyone that works for you to jump overboard. Uh, yeah, and Crispin just kind of steps out of the way on the stairs and says, after you, Captain. All right, Ed, and that's Ed. it? All right, it is Crispin's turn. Yeah, the, the, I just let him, you know, just let him by. Know. Yeah, I'll hold my turn, and then when he walks by, I'll follow right behind him. And Dane? Uh, Dane uh, will go up the stairs. And... Kind of return to the poop deck. You said poop and, deck. And say, the captain approaches. And continue his performance. Uh, I think the almost dead robot here is gonna... Gonna hold an action. See if the captain's really coming. And so will the mustachioid robot and the kobold. Well, and kobold Alex. actually is going to attack that for one more turn. That's his oh, last yeah, turn. Oh, yeah, the kobold's <laughs> still beating up its darkness. Uh, 15 to hit the darkness and um, a 9 on the will save. Yep. That was the last round of it, so he's good. Nice. Because he was one after the captain. Did I accidentally take the captain out of initiative? Yep. Yes. Uh, yes. He would be. He just shut, him. How? He just shut yeah. him down. So you know what? Captain's done. <laughs> yeah, I think the captain's after Hal, right? Yeah. But before 
Hal. Yeah, he had a 17, yeah. so he was right after Hal, yeah. All right. Um, something. All right, um, Hal, it is your turn. Okay. Uh, no, I could shoot at this guy with a 20% mischance, or I could wait and see what happens when the captain comes back on board. So, move action. He's going to reload his uh, stone bow with just a regular rock this time. And then he is going to ready an action to fire at this guy if the captain doesn't talk them out of combat. All right. And, um... Yeah, the captain is going to cast Disguise Self on himself and uh, take a move action to run back up the stairs and then uh, free action say, Attention, crew of the Perpetual Oath! You should probably jump overboard! And now it's Aline's turn. I'll go ahead and move up behind. Oh, him. yeah, here. Yeah, watch but again. After that, come on, Owen. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm, we sorry. Don't change I, I'm with Zach. I'm, I'm good. I'm good with that one. I like that one. <laughs> I think, yeah, she'll just, uh, oh, okay. Um, while you're down there, I'm missing an iPad. Fantasy. <laughs> just toss it back up if you see it. Thanks. And I guess we'll ready in action to. Attack the captain if he looks attacky. <laughs> or if I guess any of those other guys do. But I think she's only close enough to one of them, so. Ned? Uh, Sky Ned will use a move action to come upstairs. And then Betty, his standard action to cast Murderous Command on whichever crew member might be uh, mutinously objecting to his captain's reasonable order to jump overboard. Uh, anybody? Uh, Crispin? I'm ready to see these guys jump. <laughs> and Dane? Might as well jump. <laughs> yeah, also, uh, he will he will just delay. Right. Continuing his performance. And that'll bring like, us to... What? No? Okay. Um, that'll bring us to Green Robot. And Green Robot says, um, I don't think I'm gonna jump. Um, are we just done fighting, though? I mean, we don't have to kill each other, I guess. And he ain't jumping off the boat. Cold. It is unlikely that you would die from such a leap. It would it's just really be cold fun. down there. Watch. Oh, we'll get you, <laughs> totally. We have a skiff down there. <laughs> and lots of cauliflower. <laughs> I think I'm going to take us out of initiative as they are totally willing to not fight you any longer. But Mark. I don't Armor. think that they're going to follow orders to jump off of the... That's also smart. Yeah. I gotta give it to him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Skynet's ready to action is a pretty specific trigger. It is or, true. Or they actually that. didn't jump, so I'm oh, going yes. to <laughs> like need... I'm gonna <laughs> need green. I'm actually going to need green to roll a will save. Jeff is correct. We're playing this by the rules, Sam. It's true. It's true. All right. Yeah, we're still all ready to action. No one is Tell me if it's higher than a 19. It's a natural 20, so it's not higher than a 19, but it is, but it is still, still an automatic pass oh, with an 18. My heart. I can't <laughs> believe. So, I mean, yeah, Skynet is just like, terminate. And then, like, person's just like, that, that IP actually isn't within the bounds of this game. And then just refuses to do so. He doesn't terminate. There is no terminating. There is no terminator. Uh, uh, that's it. Can, uh, for the heck of it, Hal is going to yell down to Crispin. 
Hey, uh... You mind stepping about... Say... 20 feet forward, <laughs> just for no reason? <laughs> you think the combat's over, Sam. Uh, it's, I, it's over when we're over. This seems so, like a bad idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> so he does okay. it. <laughs> the second he does, I activate my uh, levitation buffer. <laughs> so I get to using my mesmeris level plus my charisma modifier in place of my CMB make a bull rush against anybody within five feet of the ally that I hypnotized. <laughs> so I'm going to bull rush this one that direction. Uh, the abject cruelty of it all. I love it. Uh, so that is a 23. <laughs> oh. How is the kobold CMB, CMB, Sam? <laughs> yeah. Um, the Kobold Vexing Dodger CMD is a 12, so you knock him yes. 15 feet. Yes, mm. and by the uh, thing feet? of Bull Rush, which I was looking up here, take a minus four penalty in each creature past the first. Though the second guy, it would be a 19. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Still seems like he's going to move five feet. Feet to the west, yeah. Sam. Yeah, you beat it by um, five. He, he goes actually ten feet still. <gasps> yeah, bizarre. This would have gone much easier if you had just <laughs> dove yourself. You hear Hal yell from the front of the boat. Did that work? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Nailed it. And this kobold, who is now the only one left standing, and the only one. Who you know is a kobold goes. That was, that was really unnecessary. It, it doesn't does look like he metal? did anything either. Like they just lift into the air and get knocked sideways. <laughs> Those poor, poor robots sinking to the bottom of the lake of mists and veils. Well, at least you're all right, my old friend. <laughs> yeah. Well. Something would have to be seriously wrong for you to go after your old friend after that time we went on the roller coaster. <laughs> the one bottle episode where we got trapped in an elevator and we worked out all our problems together. Oh, yes. And then we had Froyo afterwards. It was gelatinous. Have you oh, ever had frozen yogurt? Oh, I'm sorry. How thick was the dairy, Sam? It was... Uh, the kobold um, isn't familiar with frozen yogurt, <laughs> and these memories are flawed in that they are uh, magically conjured. Yeah, um, it sounds like you need to go to a different yogurt place. Yeah, yeah listen, yeah, listen. If you tell frozen the difference, yogurt is gelatinous. Yeah, you can't tell the, the difference between Maybe put a little less yellow. gummy bears in the bowl, all right? I'm saying. It's all Ali probably has said bears. something on Yelp about it already. <laughs> <laughs> It's all a goo. It's a thick goo. I don't understand. I asked for yogurt. I got a gelatinous. It was 80%. I asked for froyo and I got gogurt. <laughs> Can you? I, oh, I, I, I can't even speak. I am speechless. The outrage. Wait. <laughs> so much pectin in this froyo. Oh my gosh. I, no. Pectin doesn't go in frozen yogurt. Extra That's not pectin. Where it, goes. it does now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they really packed it in there. <laughs> well, um, I think with the uh, services of our definitely an alien yellow fella secured and all but one of the robots slash kobolds vanquished, I think we're going to draw the curtain on this particular adventure for now. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and watching us, bearing with us through technical difficulties and um, staying up to this profoundly late hour, at least for me. I blame um, my cousin Lennox for that one. <laughs> um, or for watching on demand later, or for listening, or whatever. Um, but especially for donating to Extra Life, um, for getting us to that sweet, yeah. sweet goal. Uh, looks yeah, like no, we, uh, 
We got another one. I believe it was from Bellandora. We're up to 275. Wow. wow. Thank you so hey, thank much. Thank you so Bellandora. much. Yeah. And this everybody is... else. Yes. Thank you, everyone. And yeah. The children. Uh, the children. That again. And... Also, thank you, you suave space pirate, again. for coming to our terrestrial yeah. podcast and showing us what's what. In the bird land of well, I had fun. I would. I, this was a really good intro to one e, and I enjoyed myself quite a bit. Thank you for well, having me here, man. It was if awesome. There is yeah. ever a group that is going to fastidiously stick to the rules and best <laughs> represent the system as was intended by Paizo. It's us. It's absolutely us. So, well, that's you what I appreciate could... about you. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with four humans and a halfling. Um, or three humans, a tango, and a halfling. We're just going to play it straight up the way it was written originally. <laughs> Four totally normal humans playing totally normal Pathfinder on a totally normal Monday night. <laughs> yep. Yep. A totally normal official map. <laughs> yeah. Totally normal RPG Maker XP map. That's right. I had to go back to XP because VX doesn't have ships. Mm. Oh, no. I don't know why they got rid of ships. Have to make room for the pie, man. <laughs> but um, yeah. So thank you, Adam, for coming. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, for donating. And um, think we'll see you because it's time to go to bed. Yeah, we'll see you, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Night, Sam. Good night, Sam. And everyone. Good night, Sam. Good night, good night Sam, and everybody. Aww. Yep. And Chad, I guess also good night. He's waving. <laughs> Here we go.